So, objectives and goals are what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, so we're going to build some downhill trails. <laughs> so essentially, uh, uh, downhill mountain biking is essentially just riding your, your bike down a hill. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, this includes gravity-fed trails. Uh, they're graded uh, with bermed corners uh, with a varying technical difficulty. Uh, these trails are built uh, to International Mountain Bike Association standards uh, to ensure the safety and protect, uh, obviously, the uh, or to minimize the, the impact to the environment. We plan to have our downhill trails located on the Tumbler Ridge between the bald spot towards Dawson, wherever lengthwise, basically, for the trail. And um, these pictures show more of a, like a, a flowy berm trail. A lot of our trails will only be about the width of a handlebar of your bike or downhill more difficulty, which it will minimize impact on the force. And with those trails uh, starting uh, at the top of, of Tumbler Ridge and, and kind of all trickling down together, they should all, uh, I guess, congregate down uh, where we, we propose to put a pump track in the future, which we'll talk about in, the, in a moment, uh, and then uh, and then tie into other trail systems that are already pre-existing today. But our focus is largely on the, the mountain biking downhill aspect, not necessarily uh, other trail types that are pre-existing. <coughs> So we're also building cross-country trails. Uh, essentially, it's it's riding your bike through the forest or countryside. Uh, the, the, these trails are, are typically skinnier, single track, uh, much smaller, uh, and they require a lot more physical prowess and uh, typically lead to a, 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 a viewpoint or, uh, or a, a natural technical challenge, which appeals to cyclists. So that bottom picture there, that's typically what your downhill trails will look like as well. Mm -hmm. Just so you get an idea. We're also looking at uh, the Chris Lega Trail. So that's an existing uh, jump trail that was built in about 2015, as I understand it. Uh, the trail is essentially in a state of, uh, currently in a state of disrepair. Uh, our goal is to refurbish that trail to international safety and environmental standards. We would like to make obstacles and features on this trail more accessible and user friendly and family friendly, so everybody could ride this trail. Yeah, so, so today the, the, the trail is largely, uh, there used to be a lot of really big jumps for, for advanced riders, and it, it might have been, even by my, my experience standards, it's a little dangerous possibly. So we're going to go in, uh, so our, our goal is to go in, kind of maybe dumb down or easy down uh, some, of these, uh, some of these features uh, and make it more accessible for the, for the rest of us. Uh, also, uh, because we'd be uh, building a tie MBA standards, uh, the, the trail will be a lot more sustainable. Like right now, it's in a state of disrepair because it, you know, it needs to be built uh, to uh, to more modern standards, uh, you know, managing water, you know, water runoff and whatnot. So um, it'll last a lot longer, <laughs> and we can actually, uh, you know, take care of it. So on this next slide, uh, we just wanted to demonstrate that uh, as part of our strategic plan, we've engaged the greater community with our vision to establish. Not just Tumbler Ridge as a mountain bike mecca, but but really look at Northeast BC as a mountain biking destination. We've engaged a lot of our our uh, other communities to uh, to form a uh, I guess a, eventually a master plan on how we make Northeast BC uh, you know a, a bigger mountain biking destination, kind of like what they've done in the sorry what is it called down south? Uh, Vailmont to Terrace. Yeah. They've done the Ride North BC. Ride which North has BC. It's been a huge hit. Yeah. So we'd love to see that in this area as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're also building a pump track, as I haven't mentioned uh, earlier. So this is a self-contained biking playground. Uh, it's forever expandable to include skill building features uh, and provide opportunities to host clinics and events. Uh, you know, a pump track is typically it's, it's circular or oval in nature with a series of, of rollers uh, and berms and, and maybe little jumps. Um, this is a venue, venue where uh, riders and, and youth build their skills in a safer, more controlled environment. Uh, and, and we, we'll talk about in a moment where we like to place this thing, uh, but have it tie into the, the, the bigger uh, infrastructure that we'd like to, to, to provide to the community. So our, our proposed pump track location. So for the pump track, uh, construction funding will come from other sources. We're actually engaging other sources for the funding that, that's not very here for today. Uh, where does the district come in, however? Uh, for the pump track, in the future, we will approach the, uh, the district about land use and maintenance of the, of the pump track. It, it will be posted on uh, municipal land, and, uh, and we'll revisit that later. 
The proposed area we're looking at right now is uh, between the Saddle Club and the Ball Diamonds. The area is already zoned recreation, so we felt it would be good for the pump track. Also, it's basically at the bottom of where all our downhill trails will come down. So, and there's parking and everything around there already, right? So let's just build the track and it's there. Mm -hmm. But so, we can definitely change that too if district wants it somewhere else. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back at a, a later time asking for access to the right, to the right land, red land uh, when we get the we secured a good chunk of funding so far actually for it. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we'll do an uh, environmental assessment, check the, I guess the, uh, the soil and whatnot. What, what, where, where is the right place and what makes sense for both Tumblr and, and for the, uh, the cycling community? But our big uh, our big deliverable uh, for for 2019 is our trails master plan. Like what where you know we, we have this vision. Where are we going? What do we want to do with this? Uh, we need a plan. We need to start with that with that with that plan and, and share that with you. So uh, we'd like to engage the community to align our vision and priorities to what Tumblr Ridge wants and to what Council wants. Uh, we'll perform a, a terrain and suitability assessment for the design and layout of a, a complete trail system catered to Tumblr Ridge, and we'll provide an over year five year phase of the approach at establishing the, the infrastructure over time. So this master plan will give us mapping and catalog cataloging of the existing trail networks and identify any trailheads, parking lots and related infrastructure, as well as community, it, they will create a community master plan document which supports soliciting and securing funding and guide development of trails for the next five to 10 years. So these guys will come in and just create our trails. It'll be shovel ready when they're done and we can just hire crews to come in as we get funding to build these trails. So what exactly are we asking the uh, District of Tumblr Ridge for today? Uh, so we're seeking $45,000 to find that 2019 trail master plan to take us through the next five years at least. So Tumblr Ridge Mountain Bike Association is submitting a grant in aid request seeking the $45,000. Uh, we also like to share with you that uh, we also have funding requests submitted to other organizations for smaller projects like that pump track we talked about earlier. We are actively seeking funding from Nor Northern Development Initiative Trust as well as the Tumblr Ridge Community Forests, who we just found out today has are funding us with thirty thousand dollars that we've asked them for, which is awesome news. Mm -hmm. No, it's excited. So the community is behind us. <laughs> Uh, and this is a quick slide for uh, just demonstrating that uh, we're, we are working closely with our partners, uh, for example, rec sites and trails BC for tenure use to the Crown land in that, that section of the Tumblr Ridge uh, where we like to establish those, those downhill trails. Uh, obviously, the, the, the Tumblr Ridge Global Geo Park as well, how we can work properly with them, and Community Forest who just uh, committed a, a good chunk of uh, the funding that we were looking for. We're also working with parks sorry rec sites and trails bc on they're working on giving us an intent to use the crown land right now um, they are looking into the areas that we've selected right now and we actually have a meeting with them on friday so we'll know more then um, we already have several letters of support from local companies and people and um, we've also received many donations from small companies and the community forest grant too which is great and that concludes the more formal part of the question. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, so thank you very much for your presentation and, and uh, I've heard lots about it. See it on Facebook. So it's good to see you guys come forward to uh, Council News. Council got questions? Council Norbert. Um, you know, first I'd like to applaud you guys for um, really, really doing a lot of hard work. It really shows in your presentations, both here at the Community Forest and, and all of the the work you've done, it seems like you knew what needed to get done moving forward and came ready with a, with a plan um, and uh, where we fit into that plan. Um, so, you know, really well done um, and through, and it's all done through volunteers, which outstanding, you know, I, I, I really like that. Um, so my only question is that um, I know that your idea was to originally have it by the ball dance. Now, do you think this could be feasible, like 
closer downtown area because um, it seems like um, this could be another um, s s similar um, recreation opportunity as the skate park. But um, you know, if we had it somewhere downtown, it could help alleviate um, you know the usage there. You know, and then it gets the people from out of town into our downtown. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, anywhere is good. But um, like to keep the the options open. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, no, and I think uh, the, the key to, to uh, and this is what we're, we're coming for today, is to fund that master plan, is to engage our key stakeholders, you know, work with everyone to find what is the right spot that works for everyone. Uh, we, we came up with that with that location uh, just because it was already zoned recreation. There was something like this possibly there in, in the past that uh, was of a different nature, but uh, I'm happy, we would be more than happy to, to put it where, wherever it makes sense for everybody. So I'm happy to, to, to make adjustments. Of, so, so let's come up with that plan. That's what we're <laughs> help us with that plan, and we'll then we'll figure it out from there. So I echo what he's saying as well. Is uh, I think it's great you guys come in as a volunteer group. You've put a lot of work in this already. It's it's easy to see. It's well presented. It's easy for us to see what you need from the district, and it's staged. I like that. I like the idea that it's a hand up and not a handout. I think that's very very critical at this time. Uh, instead of people always just coming in to say we just need this chunk of money and we're not going to do anything to get the money ourselves but i like that you guys are going out and, and sourcing other funding uh, you've done your homework you've in, engaged the province already to try to get the uh, ability to get down uh, the hills from the what you guys call the tumbler ridge but uh, um, it's actually the tumbler range is where it started but whatever no big deal and and you're right there was something out there like that right now it's uh, where the horses are being staged and i don't i think that it was supposed to come up to council us to look at the releasing of that area there. So it was actually my dad that built that out there. It was a BMX track that my dad built uh, back in the mid 80s and all the equipment was donated from the mines and labor from gentlemen that worked at the mine to build the BMX track. So wow. I applaud you for, for taking it on and I think this is nothing but good for Tumblr Ridge. I think this is definitely headed in the right direction and uh, the wheels of municipal politics move slow. So the, the quicker you guys can get on it, the better it's gonna work for you guys. Well, we're here to make it as easy as possible for you. <laughs> Thanks. Any more questions? Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Um, I'm actually quite excited about the Chris Light Trail to be revitalized. Um, definitely those jumps are out of a lot of people's uh, abilities. So to see something there get revitalized and maybe hopefully work on um, turning that into the uh, overall scope of the interpretive trail network in that area so there's lots to be done there as well and it's quite a nice area and it's right in town too right behind the vic so hopefully we can get a couple different options there to for different skill levels and abilities so thank you very much for the insight i just have one for you and that's in regards to the timeline on your master plan mm -hmm. so here we received the funding from the district how long before that plan is, is done by the company you're looking at hiring? They could be up next this summer. And how long for them to finish that? It was a, I think a month. It, it would be it would be completed within uh, the calendar year. It would be the, yeah. With, with the, the completion, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and part of uh, part of engaging that organization was just to get a rough order magnitude for the budget. Uh, we would actually probably go through an RFP process, find uh, an mm -hmm. appropriate vendor uh, that, that could work with this area, to build. Uh, the timeline that works yeah. for everybody, and go from there. So. Do you have an approximate cost on trail building? Approximate cost would be, was it roughly seventy thousand per kilometer? Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in, and I'll echo the, the two other councillors that, that said how well prepared you were. I um, mean, you know, obviously, lots of volunteer hours have gone into this, and pass off to your organization for what you've done. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for your kind words and support and thank you for everyone in the in the crowd for, for being here tonight. <laughs> like the banner. I know, yeah. Like the <laughs> 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 you skip the fact that once you go to it because oh. I don't this uh, right here. Okay, we're going to go back up to 5.1 BC Assessment. Uh, Scott Sitter on behalf of BC Assessment provide an update of the 2019 assessment rule. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I haven't been in front of such a big audience for, for a long time. <laughs> you guys are all here for me? They're thinning yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, should I just begin? Please. Okay.
My name is Scott Sitter. Uh, I'm the assessor of the Northern BC region. We have four offices up north here today. Uh, Prince George, Dawson Creek, Terrace, and Williams Lake. Um, and uh, between myself and uh, four deputy assessors and our staff, we cover 70% of the north, 70% of the province. Today I'm going to go over essentially a little bit about BC assessment and then over a little bit about what happened on this year's assessment roll. Feel free to, if you have any questions, anytime, feel free to stop. Uh, 1974 um, was when BC assessment was formed. It was in all parties. The whole idea behind BC assessment um, was to have a fair and equitable provincial assessment authority. Before it was done all by municipalities and everything was done differently and this provided a lot of stability to the assessment system, particularly on the industrial and commercial side. Um, so basically what we do is we produce a list of every property and assessment role, their tax liability and their assessed value. And that's what's used for determining the distribution of the tax burden. And you can see that about seven, seven and a half million or billion dollars in revenue for municipalities is used and, and regional districts and so on is generated through the assessment process. Uh, most of our properties, we use a market value as a base. Actually, in the Assessment Act, it says actual value, but uh, it's been interpreted by the courts to reflect market value, so that's primarily our basis for assessment. Of course, assessments are done on a, a mass basis. There are some properties, though, that are done on legislative rates, and those are the mostly the long and skinny things and some of the major industrial properties, and they're done on regulated rates. For the most part, they reflect a cost some type of a depreciated cost. Uh, so you'll see the types of properties there. Uh, electrical power lines, lines, right of ways. You know, all the uh, oil and gas and so on is done at regulated rates. Here are property classes. So we use each of these property classes to, uh, to group every property in the province as well. And of course, the various tax rates get applied to each of these property classes depending on their, their portion. Most of the properties, probably over 80%, around 80% have some type of residential classification. They're either all residential or some type of classification. The next largest group would be the business and other. That's basically commercial, what we think of as commercial. And then the other ones, uh, major industrial, light industrial, and so on, much smaller numbers. Some of the important dates, of course, right now we're dealing with assessment notices just came out. We would have produced that assessment role in at the uh, end of November, early December, and then everybody would have received a notice uh, this week, last week, right? So that that's the that's when we produce the assessments, and then <coughs> there's a uh, an appeal period or an uh, inquiry period through this month, and everybody has a, has this month to look at their assessment, do some comparisons, uh, check with us if they think there's any issues, and file their appeal before the end of January. Then after that, there's a time for the part for the review. Those get reviewed, and then uh, we carry on from there. Second level of appeal is through the uh, <coughs> property assessment appeal board. First level is very informal, pretty straightforward. It's usually a lot of it is done over teleconference and so on. The second level appeal is usually written submissions and a little more formal hearings sometimes. Uh, another important date is we we value all properties as of July first. So everybody's got the same valuation date. And we look at the physical condition of a property on October 31st. So whatever was there October 31st is what you get assessed on. Basic and simplest form, assessed value times the tax rate equals taxes paid. That's as simple as, as it can be. Uh, of course, there's exemptions and so on to get involved in there. Um, and other things that can come into play, but for the most part, for most properties, that's basically how it how it plays out. Assessments and taxes. This is always the question that goes back and forth. Um, our main function is to provide the distribution, provide the equitable distribution of the tax burden. When when taxes increase or when assessments increase, um, and taxes remain, budgets remain the same then there's really no change. It's, there might be distribution changes within the assessment because of assessment, but essentially it doesn't necessarily 
immediately corresponded to tax increase. If it did, you'd see you know, 20%, 30% increases that you saw in Vancouver in the past several years. That's what you would see in your taxes. Um, now the assessment rule. This is provincial, so across the province, seen um, you know just over. We usually get between one and two percent growth annually. That's what we've seen across the province. We've seen the assessment roll across the province increase by seven percent, um, and we've seen non-market change increase. Um, total non-market change about uh, thirty-two billion dollars. And what that is is basically new construction. We refer to it as non-market change because it also includes subdivision, it can include zoning changes and so on. So it's not just all new construction or demolitions and so on. It includes a few other factors as well. In Tumblr, uh, very, very minor changes as far as all the account goes, as far as properties. And you'll see the actual value on the assessment roll. I'll show a few more of that decrease slightly from 2018. Now that, this slide show, slows, we often speak about values. This is an actual value. The next slide, which is essentially everything that's on the roll, is the assessed value. It's market value plus the regulated rates. When we speak of net general values, that's essentially removes everything that's taxable. So net general is, is what your, uh, your taxes would be applied against, right? So you can see here, this has been the trend for the past several years. This goes right back to 2010. And you can see some increase and then back down to where we are in 2019. So slight decrease from 2018. This slide here, um, this points out, this highlights, again, it's net general values, it highlights non-market change. So this is the new construction. This is a significant change for, for top right now. You can see the residential there, not much change. That's usually highlighted because it's the largest portion of most assessment rules. Uh, so new construction, all the changes to do is only anything else that may have changed amounted to 221,000 across the Tumble Bridge, and that's it. But you can see there in the, the major industrial, that's where the biggest increase is or decrease is. So about $6 million was taken off the assessment roll due to non-market change. So what that means, what that translates here is about 1.3 million of that was because of Wolverine, because of recosting that was done, because of a, a PAV case, uh, how we deal with major industrial property. Does that constitute non-market change? Their assessment was reduced by 1.3 million because of that. The balance of that is all to do with oil and gas properties, uh, to do with removal of equipment, uh, closures, uh, or suspensions. So that's significant. Probably close to 5 million of that is, of course, Now, if we look at the assessment rule, um, and again, we're looking at general values there, you can see by each property class how much each property class has changed. So you see the residential, I can't even read that up there. So you can see the residential <laughs> down just, the, just over 5%, and again, utilities. Major industrial, you can see the total. So what goes into major industrial is not only the non-market change reduction, but you factor up for cost and then you depreciate, for, and then you reduce for depreciation. So there will be, uh, that, that's why that total is higher than just the non-market change. You can see the business and other, not much change at all. From 2018 to 2019. You can see the total dollar amounts there. So the total rule from the general perspective is down 4.3%. hard to read. There's copies afterwards, right? <laughs> and then I can show you the distribution. This will be in the, you guys, I think you publish this too, don't you? Where you send it out to all the, all the members? Okay. So up here you can see, this is just an interesting slide. It shows you where the change in value is, how many properties change. <laughs> so between Minus 5% and 10%, you can see how many properties went down by that much. 
You can see how many properties went up by that much and so on. It's just an interesting distribution. So you can see overall in the end you're about four to five percent decrease over there. Right. Here. Got it? Click them on, man. I can't Click. read it. Just keep going, yeah. It's <laughs> Um, this is uh, this is sales trends. You can find some of this information on our website as well. You, you won't get a lot out of this because of this low numbers. Right? You're looking at very small numbers of sales. It's just that essentially a sales trend to sell your family to produce it, uh, you know, profit types, and it puts in there where the red line is or the middle lines. That's the valuation dates. So those are the bars are showing where the sales were on either side of that date. This one is showing median single family dwelling prices across Northern BC. So this is the first year in the North here where we've gone to a median to illustrate. I've got some averages at the end, I'll quickly show you. But you can see where Tumlin Ridge is, 2018 to 2019, where the median assessed value is for single family dwellings <coughs> at about 128,000, <coughs> excuse me. And you can see some of the other communities across, across the region. We said the median went was the first year we went to this across the entire province as opposed to the average. It felt that it showed a little more consistency around the province versus using an average. But again, I provided both. We can, we can show you that. At the end. This one here, another example just around the province where you can do some comparing. We've just picked some of the major, major centers. You can see the median in Tumlin Ridge was. 128,000 median in Vancouver right now is a lot higher. <laughs> 1.7 million, right? Yeah. That's pretty significant. Uh, one thing I just want to point out here is for anybody, our, our, we're constantly improving our website and we encourage people to go onto our website and even there's a sign up process now where you can log in, you can create a profile. And then you can save comparables and do a few things and see a few other graphs and things that uh, aren't just on the regular site. But just the regular site, this is the type of information you get. You can see this on any property in the province. It's still, uh, it's fantastic for the residential, for the single family residential across the province in municipalities. A little challenging in the rural, it's not all there. And for some of the ICI and exempt properties, it's, it's not all there. But you can go on here, you can, you, can, you can look at this information, you can use this information to compare it to neighboring properties, there'll even be maps on there, and it will show you all the sales if you look for the sales. They will come up as well. So this is a great tool. Uh, this saves us a lot of time, frankly, because people can go on and compare and do compare not only the sales, but they compare their assessments. So when we do get questions, they're usually quite more informed questions, and our appeal rates are usually down compared to historically, but we have low appeal rates regardless, but this information is very helpful. And again, once you, if you sign on to that, you can see, you can see extra maps and graphs and so on. Uh, one thing about, this is interesting uh, for major industrial properties to do with the closer allowance, I thought I would throw this in there. When some, when some of these major, these oil and gas properties go into a closure, their value gets reduced to about 10% of the overall value. And there's certain things they have to do, let us know by certain dates, if something's going into closure and so on. So, uh, and you can also shut in or permanently close pipelines as well. This we're not gonna, this is, you're not gonna be able to read this one either, but it's, it's on there if you, if you get a hold of this slide deck. But this is just the averages. It shows average prices, so you can compare average prices uh, as opposed to the median prices. So as opposed to taking the middle value, you can take the average price here. So if you look at the average price in uh, Tumblr Ridge, the average house price is uh, 143 as opposed to the median, which is 128. Um, I think the, we'll leave it at that. Let's go back to this one. All right, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, any questions by council? Can you explain to us how the situation occurred at Peace River Coal a few years ago where they were able to go from an operating mine to a non-operating mine and decrease their taxes by $2.2 million? Yeah. 
So <laughs> the mine itself, if it goes into closure and it has to go into the terminology it is permanent. However, there's no clear cut definition of what permanent is. So foreseeable future gets thrown around quite a bit. But as soon as they, all they have to do is advise us. Uh, a signatory of that organization simply has to advise us by this November 30th date that they're closing. And we will reduce their assessment to 10% of their replacement cost. So if their assessment was a half of replacement cost, it goes down to 10% of it. So it's simply a notification from the mine by a certain date that they are closing. <clears throat> and do they have to be closed for like three years or? The three years, that, that becomes an automatic. We don't need a letter there. Okay. And so there's certain things in there that will that can generate it. I can't remember if it's two years for pipelines or three years for something else, but there's a certain date, period of time where we don't need a letter. If it's just been shut down for that long, it gets that closure out. And so, so what is the designation, if I may continue on, what is the designation between a closed coal mine or, or, or gas, oil and gas facility and one that isn't? Is it, you know, I've heard it has to be in care and maintenance and does that apply to every building that's on that property or? It, it simply has to be, it has to have operated. It simply has to have function. Care and maintenance will go on, right? That still can be qualified for closure. Okay. Simply maintaining your property, but this is about product. The interesting issues come in when it is it partially closed or is there parts of a mine or a mill or something that can be closed? And that has to be looked at it on an individual basis. So you have an assessor that goes and looks yeah. at that? Okay. But it, we actually have a, a specialized industrial team, and that's all they do. Because it's very technical when it comes to the laws, and when it comes to closure allowances, suspensions, and so on. So we have an actual dedicated team uh, that deals just with that. We actually have a dedicated oil and gas team that deals with that specifically. They're, they're together, those two teams, maybe industrial and oil and gas. But it, it does get a little complicated. You have to look at each one specifically. Mm -hmm. But it, in the simplest form, they inform us it's closing, and it's the right person informing us. They get their assessment. Okay. Any more questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Hang on, I'll, I'll go again. I was okay, leaving, giving people opportunity there. Sorry. So you also had, uh, you'd mentioned $1.3 million change into the operation at Wolverine. So that is the value of the Wolverine has decreased by $1.3 million, not the assessed taxes that we received from the, as the District of Tumbler Ridge. That's, right. That's the assessed value. Okay. That was a case uh, that was in the tab for a number of years. And it was, well, it was uh, a challenge to the way certain steel was costed. Okay. And uh, that case went through the... Uh, through the courts, and it was determined that uh, we had to do an alternative. Okay. That resulted in a reduction in the number of these across the province. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm just wondering if you could make sure staff gets a copy of that so we can actually all get a copy yeah. that we can see. Yes. Yeah. Have it? Right. Okay. Great. Right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hope wasn't too painful. <laughs> All right, next is uh, 5.3, the Tumble Ridge Global Geopark, Sarah Waters. <coughs> Welcome. Hello, thank you for uh, fitting me in on, on the agenda today. Uh, so I'm here to talk about uh, two different things. And so the, the first item I'm here to discuss is something I think is quite exciting. And that's um, the first, um, hopefully, annual Canadian UNESCO Global Geoparks Conference. I'm not sure what CUGGC stands for. You should all have a copy of the itinerary of that. So um, the Canadian uh, National Committee on Geoparks uh, which is comprised of the three UNESCO Global Geopark representatives as well as other representatives from across Canada in the fields of geology, you know, so on. So that the, the people have created the geopark concept in Canada um, have all agreed that uh, we should be meeting at least annually um, in a geopark. And uh, Tumblr Ridge UNESCO Global Geopark brought that idea forward and has invited them to come 
and so we will be hosting actually all of the Canadian National Committee as well as the three Canadian UNESCO Global Geoparks in Tumblr Ridge, uh, January 28th to 30th this month. And uh, it's really exciting to me because before uh, this, the Geopark people that have come to our Geopark have all been here to assess us. It's like we don't have friends. So I'm so <laughs> excited that everyone's coming to kind of have a taste of what our Geopark has to offer because I think we really are unique. And so it's exciting to uh, build the first annual meeting in Tumblr Ridge. Uh, in addition to that, we're actually also working with uh, the Canadian Commission of UNESCO to build the representation of Indigenous people in Geoparks in Canada uh, as well as globally. And so we're going to be hosting the first Indigenous Roundtable on Geoparks on the 31st, and that's sponsored by the Canadian Commission of UNESCO. And we should have Indigenous peoples here from New Brunswick, Per Se, all of the Treaty 8 nations have been invited, as well as the Kelly Lake communities. So it's really exciting that we'll have a roundtable discussion led by Indigenous peoples on their role. And we're hoping to take this actually to um, the Global Geoparks Network, uh, where we had support from uh, Latin America and uh, Caribbean network to create a global geoparks uh, network indigenous peoples working group and that would be a global initiative there's only um, eight working groups so far so it's something little something we're working in on, on the side so it's a really exciting time for us this January and I would like to uh, actually ask the district of Tumblr Ridge to be involved in it and to host uh, a meal which would be well, open to all the bits. There's a little dinner budget included in your packages, just kind of outlines. Uh, it would So it would be for the delegates of the conference as well as the Indigenous Roundtable. We'd like to invite the District of Tumblr Ridge Council and staff. And it was recommended by uh, Mayor Bertrand that we consider also inviting the Peace River Regional District delegates. So the list you see there, which is 42 guests, does not include the PRD, and if we add the PRD, which I think is eight, sorry, I just threw that on at the last minute, um, is about another 400. So we're asking for up to 2,400 in costs to host the dinner. Uh, and of course, that would be acknowledged to all of the conference delegates as well. So that's the first item that I'm here to discuss. <laughs> Are there any questions about that before I move on? Okay. Uh, the second part of my presentation is, um, I'm going to say it's a bit more of a conversation. And uh, this, is, this is just one of those opportunities that came up with very tight timelines. But I think it's something that I, I think that's very important to bring forward to the entire community. And, um, that's that purpose-built museum idea. And I just want to say for the record that no one else has vetted the term geopark museums. <laughs> you know, it's just the, the best way to marry the two ideas. So a little bit of background. Uh, late last year, uh, Bruce White with the Ministry of Tourism sent this uh, news release to me and told me about an infrastructure that would co cover up to 100% of the cost of new infrastructure projects uh, in BC with a special focus on Northern BC. Uh, for those of you who have been around for a while, these big infrastructure projects with funding that's 100% by the province and feds don't come very often. Uh, at the time, Bruce told me that the application was due in September and you all are aware that a lot of conversations have been happening between the Geopark, the Tumblr Ridge Museum Foundation, the Museum Foundation and the District of Tumblr Ridge, the Peace River Regional District. So we felt that, okay, you know what? We'll let every, everyone talk, hash it out, and we'll come back to this kind of March. And then uh, I went to look it up and share the idea with uh, members of our board, and I saw that the grant application is actually due January 23rd. So I'm here today a little earlier than I thought I would have been, but I think this is just one of those things that needs discussion. So that's the background on it. The total fund is up to 95 million for the rural and northern communities funds. So that's just for the northern portion of the province and rural communities. So I think that's, I mean, big money can go fast, but I still think it's a significant fund. 
um, for communities up to 5,000 people that uh, funding can cover up to 100% of the eligible projects. Each municipality can uh, submit up to one application. So if you don't like my idea, you can talk about another one. <laughs> um, and there's no limit on the individual ask. We threw 14 million up there because if you're gonna ask, you might as well ask for what you want. Um, as far as I know, the visitor center costs in the ballpark of 5 million, maybe Councillor Kakao or Cloud. No. Uh, A lot less than that. Is it? Yeah. The, the number we had from Wembley to include all, or the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum to include all of the exhibits and interpretation was about 14 million. We don't want to copy what they did, but um, I think a high caliber facility is what we would be looking for with a lot of interpretation. Uh, and you know, what I've learned is that stuff takes a lot of time and a lot of money to put together. And so we definitely want to ensure any ask would include that kind of thing. Uh, just going over a couple of benefits of the idea here, uh, the opportunity to have a purpose-built facility through external sources. So we don't need to come up with 50%. They're going to give us the money. Um, it would be multi-purpose, so we'd be looking at museum, gallery, uh, possibly a theater which could benefit the whole community with speaking events and other movies, that type of thing. Cafe, lab, playground. This is really just me spitballing here so that you guys know there would be a formal design process but just to give you an idea uh, multidisciplinary this is key and it was made uh, clear in the whole document uh, which I can forward to anyone who wants the, the link online uh, particularly with a focus on indigenous peoples and reconciliation so talking about the the different cultures in our geopark working with treaty 8 and the Kelly Lake community and uh, working on those truth and reconciliation recommendations such as uh, talking about the language and the culture and those types of things in the gallery is really a way to help garner support and it's something that we should do as a geopark as well. Um, it will be of course designed by professional uh, you know, designers, museum and interpretive display designers so engaging for all ages and backgrounds. It would also include lab and curatorial space. Um, economic diversification, you know, not only are we going to build that kind of that key draw for our community, we have it, but it would be the kind of the new, bigger, exciting version that everyone's been talking about for quite a few years. But it also, it's not competition with the Philip J. Curry. I think it's, it's, if you like this, you really need to go check out Tumblr Ridge. And I think, you know, if you, if you want to go to Drumheller, go to the Royal Tyrell, and then you go over to the Glenbow in Calgary, you see the zoo. It's the same kind of concept to me. Uh, the Claude Galois building becomes open for other options. So the old ele elementary school or the museum right now. Um, I know that there are a number of infrastructure needs that are going to be coming to that, that building in the future. So of course, that's something to keep in mind. It's still the property of the district that would need to be maintained. But there are a few things that this grant can't be used for. So you can't use it for daycare space, a gym, library. These are all things that might look great in the Cloud Galibois facility. So you don't get those, but you get the space for those. Um, and if, if it was located downtown and we're open to ideas of where that might be located, it's just kind of another draw to keep people downtown and shopping in the, in the businesses. And of course, uh, the geopark side, making Tunnel Ridge a hub for science in northern BC. There's so many fewer drawbacks, <laughs> but it's a big one. It's a big one and it's worth discussing. So ongoing operation costs are a long-term investment for the district of Tumblr Ridge and the PRD. Uh, the province does allocate money for multidisciplinary uh, museums. They make it sound like it's a lot. We're probably looking in the kind of ten to forty thousand a year range. So we're not talking big dollars. It is there, and we would certainly work to access that. But I think if we can get a building built, and we show that the geopark and the museum and the district are doing, if we do this together, then how are we going to support it, right? So this is kind of one of those trial by fire things I see, and it could be the, the greatest thing we did to make us really shine as a community together. Uh, the other drawback is, of course, the short application timeline. So, you know, we need to decide that we're doing this and go full steam ahead on it if, if we do. So what am I asking for council? <clears throat> this is something that uh, just going through the fine tooth comb, 
if the geopark and the museum submitted a proposal, we would receive up to 75% of funding and have to find the other 25%. So if we want to get that 100%, the application has to go in by the district of Tumbler Ridge. This is something that I just realized in the last couple of days and it's, it's notable. Um, it could be, uh, we're proposing that the geopark myself leads the application process and oversees the project if that's seen amenable by the rest of the, or the team, which would be the Tumbler Ridge Museum Foundation and the uh, District of Tumbler Ridge. And of course, ongoing input from those organizations. So a bit of staff time, of course, from the District of Tumbler Ridge, as well as the Tumbler Ridge Museum Foundation, but review and input along the way. And of course, a parcel of land that would be accessible after the funding decision happens. The funding will be announced in September. So at that point, it would be okay. Where are we gonna build it? And the, uh, the funding allows for the whole design and concept. And they say that it has to be built by 2027. So I think it has, I mean, sounds long when you get into these big infrastructure projects, it's not that long, especially in Tumbler Ridge, which is fairly remote, but um, I do think it gives us enough time and the funding to actually, you know, make it a high class, well-designed project with lots of input. Okay, so there you have it. It's a, it's a big ask, um, I guess. Because it's a January 23rd timeline, I felt it was important to bring this up. I, I just became aware of that timeline right before Christmas. I got support from my board to talk to other organizations about it. <coughs> the Tumblr Ridge Museum Foundation are discussing it this week. I've received a general sense that there's overall support, but I don't have an, a formal uh, motion from them to support it. Um, and I guess it's up to the council to discuss if they would be interested in supporting this specific idea, if they would be interested in uh, supporting it as the person, the, the organization to apply, which would allow for that 100% access, um, or if it's something that would be a generally supported idea and we would, and it would go back to the Geopark Society with that 75% maximum input. Go. Any questions? Sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> so just before we get to questions, um, just to Ms. Borrello, normally I don't make a decision during delegations. So we decide to um, have staff assist with this. How do we go about that to put it on this agenda with the timeline that we just heard? If we get council to agree, you can have a motion to bring it forward and honor new business. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so I'll open up for questions. Do you have any questions? Councilor Um, Thanks for the presentation. You know, um, not to sound too excited, but do you think we can do even better than uh, Wembley? You know, <laughs> can we ask for more? Well, you I don't know, know I, R. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I like it. I love it. You know, I, um, my only question was regarding the museum and how do they feel and if the conversation has been going with them. Um, but we already answered that, so um, yeah, no, great presentation, really excited. Um, it just seems like all positives for me. Kelsey In four and a half years in this seat, I've never been more excited than this presentation that you just showed. The fact that we could maybe, you know, again, spitballing here, maybe have a purpose-built facility is something that I know the museum has asked for from day one. Yeah, we'd have to come up with a way of maintaining it or funding it uh, later on down the road. But the fact that we could have a $14 million building or somewhere in the ballpark, even $8 million building built with the government money, not our money, is absolutely huge. And to me, it takes that next step for everyone, for the museum, for the geopark, for the district, for everything we've been trying to do here and the previous councillors before us to build tourism. Like, what an exciting opportunity. Like... Uh, you know, it's hard to take something like that at face value and then just you know, jump on it. But, I mean, to me, what Councillor Krakowka had initially suggested there, I mean, I think this may be something that our staff should dedicate somebody to you right away and, and get on it and, and do the best, absolute best proposal that we can bang together to, to try to go after something like this. I think this is fantastic. I don't, you know, you, when you take it from one person's perspective, it's hard to see the other side. And, you know, obviously there may be others involved that, 
the museum and that they may have a different look at it. But some of the stuff that you mentioned there, I mean, you get it all into one building. I know there's still the repository that we'd have to talk about or figure out, yep. but then that opens up, like you say, the, the possibility of a gym, daycare. We're talking about that tonight, about possibly looking at using the rec center upper deck in the curling rink so that we can put a gym in up there. But maybe we wouldn't have to if this, you know, were to, to come through, but fantastic. Absolutely astonishing. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, thank you. Alternate Mayor, <laughs> um, sitting at the board meeting the other night and, and, and seeing this grant uh, opportunity come up, it was exciting and I'm glad that uh, other councillors are excited about it as well. And as far as the conference goes, that's, that's a great first step. And uh, hopefully council will get behind that too and attend. Else? Yeah, I'd actually like to ask Council about moving this in, into new business. So the decision can be made on both concepts in regards to the dinner and then into regards to the uh, application. So, somebody wants to make a motion that we add it under new business would be great. That's great. I'll make that motion to add it under new business. Okay, if we'll move it to 8.4 and 8.4 become 8.5. Second it. Yep. Councilor Al. Any discussion? Okay, hey, thanks for everyone's enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank you. Next delegation is 5.4 TRD Society. Terry Mosgrove. tonight at the request of the Parent Council, uh, the last PNP. Um, our funding request came up and you guys invited us back to talk about it and we would love to hear your thoughts <laughs> yeah. on what you would like to see from us. I believe in that meeting, I mean, I hope Council, if we can all remember that, if not, maybe stop, but there was a discussion in regards to the amount that was requested. And it seemed like, um, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of all accounts, but it seemed like the majority had an issue with that kind of support. And then we sent it back to staff to get back hold of you to see if there's another option, if there's other options out there with lowering that cost. Because I believe is what we're kind of looking for is for you guys to come back with an alternate, with maybe a lower ask. Okay, um, uh, I gave you a handout today, um, and it's kind of, it, it breaks it down a little more. It just shows you the basic expenses, what this event actually costs to put on, uh, and it shows you the income from this last year. So this is an event that costs about three hundred thousand dollars to put on every year. It's three days. Um, obviously, we lost money last year. Um, we lost about forty-one thousand dollars. We took two big hits last year. Um, Alabama and and the festival in Prince George hit us very hard. Um, we didn't do anything wrong last year, and and I kind of felt at that PNP it maybe there was some thinking that this, this, there's something wrong with the society, and and that's why we lost money. That's not the case. Um, we did everything right. Everything was put on perfectly. Um, problem was the attendance. And the attendance has been shrinking. So really, these, these are fixed costs. So the place, uh, if you want to cut, there's two places you can cut. You can cut the time, which, you, which means you cut a day off, which means we cut the Friday, which is the free day. It's not free to us. We got to pay to put it on. It costs a lot of money. But it's the day the locals come out and enjoy it. And it's a great day. And We've gone around about this for years about the Friday, and I fully believe that we need the Friday. Uh, it's just great for the community. If we cut either the Saturday or the Sunday, now we have the issue. Out-of-towners don't come to the Friday. They come in Friday night or Saturday morning, and then they stay the weekend, and then they go home. So if we cut 
say we cut Sunday off and we do the Friday, Saturday. So one free day, one pay day. Well, now we got to charge half the price for our tickets, right? Because we're only doing one day. So why would somebody from, say, Dawson Creek spend the night? When I go see a show at Encana, I leave afterwards, I go home. So that's where we're going to lose money for the business community. We're not going to have that impact because the people who come in, the ones that do come in, they'll come in for the show and then they'll leave. So camping, hotels, restaurants, everyone, they're not going to see any benefit from this event whatsoever if it shrinks in size. So the only other place to cut costs as we see it really is the lineup. So last year, uh, you can see we spent about 132000 on the lineup. I have another page in there that, that shows the Prince George Festival for this year. And those quotes are what we were quoted on those bands for last year. So their lineup's about $245,000. Well, the, <laughs> that's about the cost of our whole festival, right? It's just their lineup. So music's, music's expensive. And if we cut on the music, um, I think we have the same problem. People just aren't going to come. Uh, if you put bands in that are what, you know, if we cut this number in half, so you put a $15,000 band as your headliner, well, we know that they're playing in the bars and everything in Grand Prairie and everywhere else. Why, why are people going to drive here? What, what benefit is coming to Tumblr Ridge? It's a long ways. We got to work really hard to get them here. So Better Than Fred's is, uh, is a bar in Grand Prairie that has all these $15,000 bands playing all the time. So without, that, without those headlining names, it's just, it just not going to work. So. I'm not sure what the answer is here. We've been, we've gone around with a lot of different ideas. Um, we have a lot of problems here. That camping is always a big issue for us. Um, where is it? I mean, you guys, you guys are looking at the same financial. Where is it that you think that we can cut that we haven't? So I, I guess I have one question for you. Can you explain in, in regards to your camping issue? That's the big issue in regards to camping? Uh, camping's always been an issue. It's been an issue. I've been on this board for eight years and we've had nothing but trouble with camping. I'm not saying that, um, on Lions, I've, I've never heard any issues there, but Monkman, we always hear issues. Um, the amount of times I've had to apologize to the campers on behalf of Grizzfest, and it, First of all, camping has nothing to do with Grassfest. Never has and never will. Um, people are, they leave our event by like 10.30. Well, 10.30 is pretty early. And they want to go back. They want to sit by their fire. They want to have a couple drinks. They want to talk. They want to listen to music. Quiet time out there is like 10 o'clock or something. So, and it's, it's enforced pretty well and people, are just mad. I've had so many people that will email me and message me and say, look, Chris Fest was great, but we're never coming back here. And I, I don't I don't know what to do about that. I, I honestly don't. Um, so, you know, Lions only has so many spots. They fill up instantly. As soon as the reservation thing is open, they're, they're full. Um, we worked really hard to get our reputation back after some camping fiascos. And, and we have. And Grizzfest is, is we're, a, we're a name in, in the music community and people know us and, and it's in a good way. And so when we talk about cutting our entertainment budget, um, I, I honestly don't see it. Um, cutting it or cutting down the days changes the event itself. Now we, we're quite aware things do need to change um, and we would like to change things, but change takes time too. We took over last year. And again, I will say we took over with no training. And we're expected to do all this stuff that we're learning as we go. And this is again, a new board that we'll be learning as we go. And these, you know, we, if you've ever volunteered for Grizzfest or if you've ever volunteered for a board, we're down there morning till night. We're there a week before, a week after non-stop these 12 16 hour days by this dedicated crew so 
So again, so I guess I guess I got another question there. You're asking the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So can, can you just kind of give me an overview of how you see that that amount changing from losing money in twenty eighteen to making money in twenty nineteen for your organization? Honestly, I don't see a lot of change. There's there's certain things here, and we've talked about fairgrounds for years, and we're always going to come back to it. These fixed costs don't change on the on the high school field. So they're, they're always going to be there. Uh, sound is always going to be around that cost. Uh, we need a fair, fairgrounds. We need a fence fairgrounds. We need a permanent stage. We need permanent facilities there. And that's the way we cut down. We can rebrand it as on-site camping to try and get away from, kind of trick them into thinking that the camping situation has changed because it's on-site. So, so really until there is a permanent place for it, um, the changes I think will be limited. So, so just yes. on, so just on, you say change is limited, but what, I, what I'm asking I guess is, you already receive $150,000 for the district. How do you stop losing money in 2019? So if you, if you lost $40,000 in 2018, and I believe the previous year there was a down as well, my understanding for 2019 is Prince George is going ahead with their event. Yes. yes. And my understanding from Dawson Creek is if they have a chance to bring in a headliner the same mm -hmm. weekend, as the cost works out, they will do that as well. As well. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Mayor Bertrand said that um, he was willing to talk to their city council. I mean, the Encana Event Center is subsidized by the city of Dawson Creek. So I would think that their town council would have some impact. You can book shows 363 other days of the year. Uh, can we get two? I mean, I would think that they would be more willing to work together if it came, if if the support came from the district and not just from us. Can yeah, I wanted to add to that. We're showing that we're operating a, a loss of forty thousand dollars. If you look at the profit and loss of just Grizz Fest alone, but what we did is we took and we went to the business owners in the town. We did it via um, a, a not in a questionnaire email and we did speak to some just one-on-one -on -one. Um, of the 13 businesses that we were able to get in touch with, 10 of them told us that they have an increase in traffic for that weekend nine of them told us that it was their best weekend of the year and seven of the 13 businesses actually showed a difference of 33.6 thousand dollars just that weekend alone in comparison with their second best weekend which varied by different businesses between July long weekend and the weekends leading up to Christmas. So although it's only a difference of 33.6 thousand in the community, it's only seven of the businesses that will be impacted by the weekend. And I mean, that's just a drop in the bucket. And it's in comparison with their second best weekend. Not if this becomes not a weekend at all. Like if this becomes a regular weekend, they're looking at a bigger loss. And right now, a lot of those small businesses are operating at, like at cost they're just breaking even so it could be the difference of one of the businesses in town making it that year and not like it's a huge impact on our economy so although it's showing the forty thousand dollar loss and i mean we see that every year our loss is their gain so i mean it's a huge investment yes but it's an investment in the economy it's an investment in town morale it's an investment in town awareness it's a uh, i actually i had different statements of that one town or one business said that it uh, brings a lot of awareness to his business alone it's his best weekend of the year we're getting his name up there so it, it's it's not as much of a loss as it looks like on paper and I, and I get the support for the community I mean yeah. don't even know so I know support for this fest we're also talking taxpayer dollars and we have to answer that part of it so yeah and council have any other questions or of course, your input is just over. I have, I have a comment. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to speak with um, with uh, Terry Lynn, and um, you know, I I, I echo um, uh, acting mayor Kukalka's, <laughs> um concerns with that. Um, if we're upping our um, investment into Grizzfest, you know, how will you take that money and help? Um, Make yourselves more profitable in the future, um, but that's not, you know, to me that's up to your board. It sounds like you um, have that in your crosshairs, knowing moving forward. Um, you know, 
for me, I love I love how you um, you came in and you showed us how much this impacts our local businesses, which is which important um, to. We can't directly affect local businesses, but we can help them parallel by supporting um, events like uh, like those events. So thank you for coming. Anybody else? Councilor. <clears throat> Do those same businesses support you guys in sponsorship? Give you deals, cut your rates, give hotel rooms away for better prices. Yes, uh, the trend is a big supporter of us. Uh, they give us all. We we have a block of fifty rooms that we reserve. And uh, they give us a substantial deal. We're, we're actually partners with the trend. And uh, we spent, last year, we spent actually the least amount of money we spent on hotel rooms in a really long time. We spent about $7,500 on hotel rooms. Uh, we've gone as high as about 13,000 in the past, um, but they were really willing to work with us last year when we came to them with this. Uh, so yeah. And, and then the other businesses as well, They do they yeah. ever give you financial kickbacks or? Uh, well, we have, uh, we do our uh, sponsor t-shirts. So m most all the businesses do okay. uh, sponsor the t-shirt and uh, uh, like the dollar store, like every uh, every item we buy, like we get a percentage back uh, in gift card at the end. Like, okay. So they keep track of how much we spend with them. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, for me, it was the $150,000 pill to try to swallow. That is a huge pill to try to swallow. We we, yes. we've, we have debated over and over and over again about $200,000 funding for the museum, which is a year-round facility. To spend $150,000 for a two-day weekend party is it's a hard pill to swallow. For I, I don't attend GrizzFest, and I have the reasons why I, I don't attend GrizzFest. Um, uh, I try to set that hat aside and think of it as a benefit for the town. And... You, you you know you, you talk about you know we have a thirty thousand dollar loss or forty thousand dollar loss well it's one hundred fifty thousand dollars that that we're putting into it so like that's the money we're looking to get bang for our buck on right so I mean I, I hope there's a solution here like I don't want to see Grizzfest come to an end but I think what uh, when, when we had our meeting before it was to look at some way to shrink this down a little bit I mean the fact that Prince George is already again going to go ahead with an event on the same weekend it's actually the weekend after ours oh sorry okay okay weekend after and was it the same thing last year yes, weekend after, after? okay but that, because of that reason we're not drawing out of Prince George anymore. for sure they're right. sticking home yeah so and we would adjust accordingly this year we would not waste any advertising uh, dollars yeah, yeah. It, we would just focus more on Grand Prairie okay Redirect their focus. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, to me, it's it's the hundred fifty thousand dollar ask. It's just, and, uh, geez, yeah, I don't. We know. understand it's a lot of money. It's not lost on us. Absolutely. It's. Um, I mean, it, it's a tough call. Um, there's because we're. Um, I mean, we're, we are a nonprofit, but because our main event is a music festival, very limited funding. Um, we do get a gaming grant of thirty thousand. We get. Um, the NDIT Fabulous Festivals at 5,000, we get Community Forest, um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, there's just not much else we can qualify for. Um, we've got uh, a list of five uh, actual dances, uh, fundraisers planned for this year, as long as some other Goodwill uh, events, just to just to bring some kind of life back into, uh, into the society, as well as the town, because, uh, you know, We've been so focused on this. The last two years has been such change with this, um, with the society and the district. There's been so much back and forth, and it just seems we're we're fighting all the time just to you know just for everything, and it, it's it's really hard. So we want to settle this one way or another and kind of move on. Um, it is a benefit to the community, and I know that these businesses will definitely will impact them uh, if it's not here. Uh, we will do what we can to cut costs, but really short of cutting days off the festival, um, I think long term it, it would hurt more than it would help. Yeah, and, and so I, I'm a little disheartened to think that you look at it as, as fighting with the district. I, I don't think that that's the way it's ever been perceived from, from our end. We're not in a fight with you guys over it. We're simply trying to make sure we get good bang for our buck with taxpayer dollars and, and we are looking to try to help you two years ago you came in with an idea or, or between yourself and, and our staff to instead of using our staff to do all the work that you guys uh, used to get done in kind yeah. you said give us the money and then we will do that work and it'll save us a bunch of money so we tried that and it, correct me if I'm wrong it didn't really work right that was last year 
that's not true at all because okay. last year out of the in-kind money, um, we spent about 10000 with the district. So instead of using union employees to empty garbages all weekend, uh, we employed the junior rangers and they worked for the beer garden bottles. Mm -hmm. um, so really it didn't cost us anything. Um, you know, other things like that, we got uh, fencing. Our fencing, the district quote came back about $6,000. Well, just under 5,000, we had a six foot high construction fence put up that was like a thousand times better. Mm -hmm. So there's areas like that where we did save money, yep. um, you know, but there are some things that you can't get away from here. We're remote. Like there was only one company that would even look at us for fencing. They're like, I just don't want to come. Mm -hmm. And that's what we get a lot. You know, it's just too far. Mm -hmm. So you, you take what you can get. We, we offered... Uh, kids games out to different nonprofit groups or, or the churches and they, they didn't want it. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't have the volunteers for that and well, what would we get out of it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a lot of scrambling. It was a lot of work all year and and reaching out to, to other sponsors and everything. I mean, it's it's a full-time job without a doubt. And so to, to say to give us one year and say, well, look, you couldn't do it. Um, well, I can tell you when, when somebody's hired for a job, they're trained for it and nobody trained us. So, you know, there, there is growing pains, but I will say again that we did not do anything wrong. This event went on and if you were there, some of you were there, you saw it go on and you would not know that there was anything different. Our sound techs out of Edmonton said it was the best run festival that they've ever been to here. It was so smooth. It was so just on point. Mm. Our problem was attendance, and that's the one thing we can't control. Right. So, just to add to that, originally, like four years ago, was it fifty thousand dollars that Grizzfest used to come in and ask for? Uh, we had a fee for service two okay. years ago, so it uh, it started at I believe it was sixty five, and then fifty five and forty five. Right, and and then when we got to the forty five point, that's when we decided to to drop the in kind portion and to give you the in kind in cash and. The pre last year was about a hundred thousand dollars in cash. Ninety, yeah. Ninety in yeah. cash. Okay, and and so so like that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like that that you know that that we went from sixty five to fifty five to forty five. Then we put the eighty or the forty thousand in in kind with the intention that it was gonna you guys would better manage the money non union or whatever it is. And and it seems like you you, you say you've done that, but. On the contrary, now you're looking for $150,000. Like the cost is just continuing to go yeah, up. Yeah, but, but it depends what you're saying about the 40. It's how it's spent, okay? Like I said, well, I only needed $10,000 of those services that you say used to cost 40, right? I, I, okay. I sourced them out elsewhere. Um, you know, there's there's just a lot of, uh, I don't know. I don't even know, know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't go down in price. I mean, you know. You know the funding keeps going down, but everything else is, is going up in right. price. When I when I go into, all of a sudden I I get a list of this. Well, this is what your tables are going to cost. This is what your chairs are going to cost. You want a beer bin? You want this? You want a garbage can? It's mm. like whoa, we never paid for any of that before. Mm. Well, well that's here's the price. Okay. And then I go in, and it's like oh no, that's the old price. Here's the new price. <laughs> okay. 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 You know. So there was always something. You know, you want to charge us ten dollars to rent a garbage can. Well, we went and bought garbage cans for 10 bucks, like, you know, something like that. Like it was, like you say not a fight, but maybe struggle is the word um, because it was frustrating. Um, there just seemed to be all these hurdles that, that we had to overcome all the time. So uh, I, 90,000, yes, that's what we got last year. Yes, we're asking for more because of the hit we took last year, absolutely. Um, but we've been underfunded for for every other year. So, you know, even seven years ago, we didn't even get any funding from the district. We just got the in-kind. But it was different then because the district was always there as that backup. Um, whereas we had no backup last year, you know. Sheena used her MasterCard to, to pay for the, the alcohol for the beer gardens. I mean, $23,000. You know, we we put ourselves out there and we, we gambled on it. And yeah, we lost the money, but we're still here. I mean, I it's going to come down to whether Mayor and Council wants to support this event and how badly they want to support it. 
And we understand that the town, half the people say they want it, half the people say they don't. But it's, it's up to you guys. So just on that, I mean, staff might have the numbers. I can't remember it off my head. So it was $90,000 in cash, and there was some in kind as well. Stage set up here. So yeah. wasn't it just over $100,000 last year? By if, the time if, they if you included the stage and, and the two tent setups, yeah. Right. So there was some in kind. So you get $90,000 yeah. in cash yeah. and approximately ten grand or whatever yeah. for in kind. Yeah. And we, we did ask for that last year. And and this, the stage and, and the tent for the stage always has to be done by the district. Uh, it's a liability thing. And they're the only ones that know how to do it. And the beer tent it needs to go up with a picker truck. So we had them, you know, do those as well. Questions, any more comments? Council? Councilor? Thank you, Councilor Cook. Oh, Terry, Terry. <laughs> As a volunteer with this <laughs> festival forever since I've been in Tumblr, I think, I, I feel the pain that you guys go through as a volunteer group. Um, you know, it's our date. August long weekend is our date. It was, you know, Grizzly Valley Days, now it's Grizz Fest. If we have to turn it into, you know, reinvent it, I think it's important to look at ways to make to make it work. Um, 150,000 when you sit, we're 200,000 when you compare it to the museum, yes. It, it's a different duck though. Um, live music, any kind of outdoor entertainment like that, I think I'd hate to see, it, see us lose it. And, and most of all, our weekend. So, you know, you cancel Grizz Fest one weekend, then people are gonna go different places. They're gonna find something else to do. Um, I think we really need to get together with our other nonprofit groups. You know, now we've got Mountain Biking Associate, ATV Club, they're looking at ATV Jamborees. It's trying to get maybe some different things happening on that weekend. I do think our gate prices need to go up. We do, you know, at least if, if, you're, if your budget for your bands is eighty thousand dollars make sure you're charging that so you know if we know you're going to get eight hundred dollars eight hundred people try you know nobody likes to up prices on things but i think it's time that maybe we're we're worth a little more than what we're charging i think because we do put on a great show there's no doubt about it and we are well known um i think as for festivals in the north we're the top one and you know we're in visitor guides uh you know, Grizz Fest is known right across Canada. People Absolutely. People know where Tumblr Ridge is, but they know about the music. Absolutely. I, I was speaking to a lady in Toronto today, and she's like, well, can you explain to me exactly where this Tumblr place is? So, yeah. But she did know about Grizz Fest, because different acts that she represents have played here. Yeah. You know, putting putting the festival on on the weekend is organizing it, getting the bands there, getting everything, you know, your merch, all that, organizing the volunteers. That Those are all things that takes a lot of time. And that's what the board is good at doing, setting up the field and doing the in kind that we used to have where the district comes together and the staff, they come and set it all up. That was that was perfect, you know, but then you start looking at the cost and how it all works. And then it gets all confusing where before it was just a great weekend and, you know, and it was something that Tumblr did. That's the weekend our parade is on. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, we, we got to we either got to just embrace it that this is our weekend let's just step up to the plate but we need to maybe figure out what other things can happen what other groups can we get together volunteers are hard to find you know and 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 nobody everybody wants something for for something just being that volunteer who's just passionate about it wants to see it happen those people are hard to find now it, it's true in all honesty when we were talking to different people within the community um we did talk to certain people that used to volunteer on a regular basis for Grizz Fest. And the reason, there was a little bit of misinformation out there, I think. And a big reason a lot of our volunteers stopped is, well, it's district run, they're paid, why should I volunteer? And, and we, that's we why we lost that. people. Yeah. Yeah. We lost a lot, a, a lot of people. And it was a very common comment that was brought to my attention on more than one visit into different people or different places. And that's too bad too. You know, that's just, that mindset doesn't help anything. So, you know, it, you're going to have to have people to pay to get things done. Yeah. Absolutely. As a volunteer, when I was on the board, I was thanking, thanking that we had those people to do the things that volunteers just don't have the time or the resources to do. So it's just getting back, figuring out how do we move forward. But, you know, 
Um, I kind of like the ideas of maybe shortening the day, not starting at, you know, that early, moving it up forward. You know, if we lose a day, it's got to be Friday, even though that's the day that's, that the, the community likes, but on a cost recovery. I don't know. But I think just keeping discussion going, figuring out, you know, I like that you've got some, some events planned to fundraise. That's always, that's, an, that's just another thing that you're bringing to the community that people can come and enjoy. So. Caltrop. Yes. So uh, how many tickets did you guys sell last year? What was the attendance last year? Uh, I don't actually have the deal. Yeah, grab it. Even even a rough number's fine. Three hundred? Five hundred? She has it with her, yeah. I think that's where we come up with the number of eight hundred people in town. We have numbers for everything but Yeah, it's not yeah. it's done. Anyways, like I know, I know the idea that we talked about here too was trying to find other things like Joanne said about bringing people into town during the same weekend and try to get them to come to Grizzfest as well. Uh, the ball tournament was something that was thrown around. Like if you know the district can help and stuff like that, you know if we can help you, we can organize the ball tournament, and get more people to come. You know if you're registered for the ball tournament, you get a fifty percent ticket for Grizzfest or whatever you wanted to call it, right? Like that that's the type of stuff that I'm looking for. Those type of ideas. That, that we could get behind it and and if we are going to get into that neighborhood of a hundred thousand dollars spend uh that, that we come up with some way of, of of trying to put things in place to get more people here if that's the problem it's the attendance yeah. problem like you say Absolutely. what can we do as a district to help you to get more attendance and like i mean i'm totally open to ideas like that yeah and that you got to make me feel good if we're going to spend one hundred fifty thousand no, dollars right that, that, not there right yet these are things and we <laughs> reached out for the ball tournament last year and I actually talked to Lindsay at the community center and she said she was busy working on the one for uh, for the fall fair so it's, she said they just couldn't do it uh, and we we had the arm wrestling club come out and we we talked uh, extensively about doing a uh, doing this on the grounds uh, they would have this this championship tournament and we would give half price tickets to all their people and in the end they said well we, we don't want to pay mm. so you know, like we can't let everyone in for free, oh, right? For sure. like, so, yep. I mean, we, we, we have reached out, but it is, it is an overwhelming amount of work. Mm. Um, we, we welcome any support, any help we can get because yeah, it's, we can't organize the ball tournament. We would We'd love to have it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't go ahead last year at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Like I know teams, teams that were in town ready for it, but it just, it never happened. So I guess I'm just going to make a comment there. And you guys talked about business increasing early on, so I'm pretty sure everybody's aware I won't own the grocery store and tumbler here. Yeah, really. So for the last three years, we've been flat. Yeah. That's right? So I know I've talked to, to Terry about that as well. So I'm glad to see other businesses are up, whether it's the restaurants or the hotels or whatever. But honestly, that's what I've seen in the last three years is flat. And we've extended our hours. We did all that as well, right? So it's not that I don't support Grizz, but I think Grizz Fest is for the community. It's not just for for your, your, your group of volunteers. I mean, I think you put it on for the community to bring people into our community. Absolutely. I also remember, I mean, I think it'd be three years ago, if not four, when you couldn't even get near the river with all the river boats. There was talk about doing like a poker uh, boat race thing. And this year there was hardly any boats. So I'm not saying it's, it's, it's the Alabama or it's Prince George, but there's something that people aren't coming for. Yeah. So, I, like, I mean, I'm definitely with Council Howell when we say that let's try to you know, I'm more than willing to, you know, there's something we can do to try to get it out there to get, whether it's a ball tournament or arm wrestling on the field or anything that, you know, like other councils have thrown around. Like that's where we can assist or, or, or try to give some direction to staff to assist. But to try to get this to end here, and not, not just the timing, but I know um, talking with staff today and, and the mayor, like there needs to be, not that we make a decision on money in a delegation, but I know you guys are looking for some kind of direction from council on whether you're looking, at, we're looking at doing some kind of support, is my understanding from staff and the mayor. So I really need to, you know, council needs to come together here and decide if, you know, is this something we want to really look at as supporting? I know the grant needs are going to be coming up with budget, but they also need to know kind of where we're standing on the amount so that they can prepare. 
So I'm I'm still uh, where, where we were last year. I can accept what we were last year, which was the ninety thousand dollars in funding and the ten thousand dollars in kind to help set up the tent and the stage. That's about where I'm at right now. I'm not anywhere and and assisting in getting ball tournaments or utilizing the community center to do whatever it is to help them. That's where I'm at. So if you're looking for a number to throw out there, I'll start it with that one. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be unreasonable to ask for a little bit more homework on your end? Um, what I would like to maybe ask is if you were to look at other uh, events like the Camp Event Center, Crystal Center in Grand Prairie, whatever's in Prince George, when they bring in a venue where there's one band and there are two openers or whatever, how much it costs them for the one night and then how much ticket sales they sell for that one event. So uh, not the amount, dollar amount, but the amount of people that they bring in to that event to, for that venue. <coughs> See if we can be comparable at 800 people for an evening or two week, for the weekend here and see if that's something that's, there's a comparison there. So if we had, instead of 10 different bands throughout the whole weekend, have one major lineup, and maybe that'll bring down the cost of the 132,000 in entertainment of the different artists, if, if that's a viable option. Do you mean to just do it on one day, or do you still mean to? One evening, yes. And um, okay, So it's not a festival then? It's an event. Yeah. So, it's not so would that be unreasonable for one day? Because I find a lot of people aren't willing to dedicate their whole weekend sometimes as well. But the campgrounds and the hotels, yeah. they're all going to lose. That, that's Our businesses are going to lose if it's not for the What weekend? if you did a battle of the bands on the Friday, which is very popular here, and then had your main lineup the following day? So you had maybe a bunch of... But, that, but that's what we talk about is that so then that's the two days. towners don't come to the Friday. We'd never see the out-of-towners for Friday That's because they they finish work and then they either drive out or they wait till the morning to drive out because Grizz Fest doesn't start till noon. So I, I think what you'll, I mean, yes, we can do that. We can absolutely do that, but we- Just to see the if there's a bit of comparable. And, and you can't compare us to Crystal Center. I know that uh, like Gloria Sons, they sold 300 tickets when they were there a month or two ago. Yeah. Uh, which is nothing. When we had Gloria Sons here, we sold 1,500 tickets. Um, so there's not really a... It, it, it's it's not a fair comparison, and because Tumblr Ridge is remote, we're called a one-off. So any band that comes here is not on tour. You don't get a deal. You're going to pay more than anywhere else because of your location. And we have some bands like Loverboy, who we go after every year. They just don't want to come. Yeah. They're older. And they know, because they've been here before, they have a minimum three hour drive, just from when they got off the plane. It is really hard to recruit these guys here. Uh, it's, it's, to get Brett Michaels, we spent three months in contract with Brett Michaels, three months, nonstop, back and forth. It's a, it's a lot of work, so it, it's, even in Dawson, uh, they take, Judas Priest is coming, but they're also going to play Edmonton, and they're going to play Cologne, and they're going to play, right? They're, it's on, it's on, they're rooted. Um, so we will never get a lower price for that. Is that, is, is that, is that our, uh, even something to consider? Because like, I know Dawson does get skipped on some of those tours, like Judas Priest and Megadeth and whoever else. They come in, but what if there's other stops and like if they're in Prince George, if they did do a stop here, can you get onto that lineup and? Okay, well, Judas Priest is gonna be a, at least a quarter of a million dollars there. Like they would be our whole, Wow. like these yeah. bands are- huge. You'll guarantee get 5,000 people here though, guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I totally disagree. I, I, I totally disagree. You would, yeah. you would not get people. It doesn't matter who you don't think so? there, you're never gonna get 5,000 people. Uh, these bands are super expensive and we know what sells here. Um, it's classic rock and it's country. And the reason we moved away from country is we can't afford it. Mm. And the reason we move, we we sh do classic and new rock is because we can't afford all classic rock. As you see by Caribou Rocks the North with their two hundred forty-five thousand dollar lineup, new rock is is cheaper. Um, the Lazies last year, great up and coming band. We follow radio trends. We're up to date on everything. And we're in talks with the radio stations all the time. And Lazies were huge and playing all the time. We only paid 7,500 for them. 
And if you saw them, you got a show because they were really good. And, you know, as opposed to Loverboy's 40,000. Yes, Loverboy has been around forever. We all know Loverboy in this story. But the price difference is phenomenal, right? So these, these are the things working against us are these, these high costs of, of these bands. Justin Ober. Um, so my question, I guess, is this to the chair. Um, maybe we should, um, just to um, you know, get things moving, maybe we should um, set a special meeting that we can discuss um, where we are in terms of how much we want to um, dedicate in terms of funding. Um, you know, I pre previously, um, we um, try not to um, discuss um, making motions the same night a uh, delegation comes in, but um, we could also just have a special meeting where we can just sort of di um, digest on where we really are and, um, and uh, to move forward. Yeah, I don't know. To me, I wasn't looking at doing any kind of uh, motion for money. I think they're just kind of looking for, you know, is there support from this council? So, kind of with their, like my understanding, talking with staff and the mayor this morning, is that's kind of what they're looking for is there, is, is there support from this council? You know, should they continue to fight the fight until the grant aid comes up and budget talk? Because that's, you know, I, I don't know if there's really need for a special meeting because their grant aid come up in, in, yeah. the, in the budget and we can decide it then. But I still think they're looking for just kind of, you know, how do we feel? I mean, Councillor Councillor Howe has already made a comment that, you know, he can, you know, he's okay with some kind of support. And I think I just want to make sure that they kind of understand that council kind of does support him. Well, talk the, the amount on that budget meeting. At least they know that they can expect something coming from us. So, any other questions from council? Well, Terry, I want to thank you guys again for coming in. I know you've been in the delegation already and had to come back. Um, I think, again, I, I kind of echo Councilor Howes. I don't think there's a fight from, from, from council or staff. I'm not saying there wasn't maybe some not help or, or some, some clicking there and trying to learn the, the process and that. Um, I don't know the exact budget date for grant needs. But yes. I'll come up there and uh, there'll be a discussion on the amount from there. Yeah, because we have to, we, we need to start book bands. bands and we're like two like months that. behind now. Mr. Ordell, do we know the date for grant aid deadline? <laughs> So that'll be on, uh, I'm assuming it's on our second budget meeting on the 28th. Uh, well, Not to February. So I, I know you guys are behind, and I mean, I don't know if I can speed the process up. Uh, I will talk, talk to the, the mayor and, and staff and see if there's you know, something that we can maybe add to a, a council or maybe mention in regards to a special. I think you have support. I just, just think that $150,000 is, is something that has to be chewed on and thought about through council. It's taxpayer dollars. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I know you say you didn't lose money last year, but we did. Right? And, and I think that's what we have to look at. We gave $100,000. There's a $35,000 loss or whatever. That's, that's something we have to answer to. So, you know, it's the same thing now. We're asking for one hundred and fifty, dollars And there's a loss in 2019, which we hope there isn't. I know I personally don't. I've supported the, the, the Grizz Fest since I've came to town. But if there is, there, where do we go in 2020? I think that's, I think that's what council's beating in their heads. I know that's what's beating in my head. So, go ahead, Terry. Can I just ask, uh, is this fairgrounds? When is that laydown yard available, and will it? Is it a possibility of the fairgrounds? It's yeah. yeah so on that, I know it's coming up in, under notice of motion uh, from Council Kirby. Um, I believe they're not off the uh, laydown yard until this fall. But the money that they pay has to go back into something. I'm not going to tell you it's the fairgrounds. But I, I think that's what we've all looked at or, or had some discussion. And I know Council Kirby's been a big push on that and is bringing it forward in a notice motion. Okay. And I know that would does take down some of your costs. Yes. Like that's a huge yeah, cost, it, right? It, yeah. I yeah. totally get that. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you. What's that? Keep it over Yeah. I don't think the next delegation is going to be <laughs> Got a big new board. Yeah. Yeah. Support yeah. 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 Um, so the next one is going to be 8.5 TR Cares, which is uh, Rose Snyder. I don't see her, so I'm thinking 
we would stop and just contact her and maybe reschedule it. Uh, we're going to start with correspondence. Uh, 6.1. Uh, correspondence from Colonia Coal International Corp. Dated December 14, 2018. Congratulating Mayor and Council on the election and introducing their corporation. Recommendation? Council Roger. For discussion? Oh, sorry, for information. Seconder? Council Kirby? Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, 6.2 Ecom 911. Congratulations. Correspondence from Ecom 911 dated November 30, 2018. Congratulating Mayor and Council on the election. Introducing, introducing their organization and inviting Mayor and Council for a tour if ever visiting Vancouver. Recommendation? Council Kirby? For information? Seconder? Council Mardinsky? Discussion? All in favor? 6.3 Wild, Wild Safe BC annual report. Correspondence from Wild Safe BC providing the 2018 Wild Safe BC annual report for Tumber Ridge. Uh, recommendation? Council Marbury? For information. Seconder? Council Majinski? Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, 6.4 is Tevit Tolson Wilderness Lodge. Uh, correspondence from Tevit Tolson dated December 17, 2018, requesting council remove all covenants on the two units she owns at 360 Northgate. And email correspondence from Black and Gold Realty dated December 19, 2018, in support of her request. Recommendation. Councilor Hall. For discussion. Seconder. Councilor Marzinski. All in favor? Sorry. Sorry. So I'll start it off with, uh, so I'd like to get a little, excuse me, I'd like to get a little more information from staff on what happened with this company uh, a few years ago. I don't remember exactly what it was, but they had, the company that owned the Wilderness Lodge had not paid their taxes, I think. Uh, they came in and asked for us to change the structure so that they could pay the taxes and something was allowed to happen. So I would like we get that information from staff. I don't expect that they'll have it tonight, but uh, we should get that information moving forward to see if there's anything we can look at here because this part of that I don't think was ever discussed. So we could always make a recommendation to request a staff report. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not so much a staff. It's more, you know, I don't. I, I, what do you guys think? If you want a recommendation on this, but I, I want that information first. Right. So um, I actually talked to to Ms. Torvald this morning, this afternoon, and I talked to Mr. Wall uh, via phone, and that's a recommendation. You know, that's kind of what I went through, and, and that's the same thing they're uh, they're suggesting as a staff report on it. And the reason they say that is. Um, I remember the same thing. There was something about some of the covenants, and there actually might, though some of those covenants that we talked about previous to remove them, and some of them actually might interlock some of these already, and it actually might be just a couple changes. That's why. Okay. Councilor Murray? Um, yeah, I think that that was my big thing um, after reading both of these correspondences was um, there's thank you for yourself and, and Councilor Howell for bringing up that there's there's key pieces of information that we're missing um, and you know I'd really like to to um, ask staff on um, you know where is this our purview right you know how can we get involved like definitely we hearing from both these people it makes me want to think how we can help but um, also um, yeah where where is our responsibility and where is the responsibility of the of um, of the owners or you know, where, where the responsibility lies. Is this our responsibility? And yeah, I think um, I'd be happy to make that recommendation that staff provide a report on um, on the history of the you know, the sale of these units and whatever has been done and, and our um, our area of operation moving forward with this. So, so just on I mean, for us for a second or. Uh, my, my my thoughts or my suggestion would be to request a report from staff in regards to the governments on the units and the background knowledge of the covenants is all I'd be looking for. I'm not into the sale of the units. I don't think that's up to us. Yeah, but there is some covenants there, and it does mention it, but previous council, and I believe the council before, there were some covenants put on it when it was dealt with. And I think if we ask staff just to produce a report on that, we'll get clear, clear information to make a decision. If somebody wants to make it that way, if you want to make the same one, we can. I like I like. I like how you, how you worded it. Absolutely. Does staff have that recommendation? Seconder? 
Council Majinski, any more discussion? Uh, what, Council Majinski? Thank you, Acting Mayor Krakowka. I am confused on this in the is there any way that the district is involved with the Wilderness Lodge? Like, is there anything that's happened in the past that to, they have a vested interest in this? Or is it just um, a letter, like the, the letters that have come in as as a support? Is that, yes. is, there, is there something that's coming up that I don't, that I've missed in the previous? Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Like I said, I think it's just a copy of this, Mr. I know there there was or there is history there, so and it's been a little bit, um, should we say, convoluted or whatever, yeah. and uh, unclear, not cut and dry. But yeah, no, there is certainly uh, some provide information in a report that we bring in. I'll just is, do it. Any more questions? All in favor? Opposed? Yes, Bylaws 7.1 Councilor Remuneration and Expense Amendment Bylaw. Report from Deputy Corporate Officer dated January 7, 2019, to seek first three readings of the Councilor Remuneration and Expense Amendment Bylaw number 674-2019. Councilor Nogar. That the Council Remuneration and Expenses Amendment Bylaw number 674-2019 be read a first time. Second. Councilor Majinski, any discussion? All in favor? Do you have a question? Councilor? Yeah. Sorry. Right. Just want to Sorry. confirm that this increase to council wages is only to offset the taxes. Just want to confirm that. That's my understanding. Okay. Mr. Ruggles? Any more questions? All in favor? Carried. Uh, recommendation number two. Councilor Majinski. That the Council Remuneration and Expense Amendment Bylaw number 674, 2019, be read a second time. Second. Councilor Kirby. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Recommendation number three. Councilor the Council Remuneration Expenses Amendment Bylaw Number 674, 2019, be read a third time. Seconder, Councilor Howell. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, new business 8.1 Building Health and Communities Committee and Tumble Ridge Health Needs Committee. A report from the Director of Corporate Services dated January 7th. 2019 to seek approval of the terms of reference for the Building Healthy Communities Committee and the Tumble Ridge Health Needs Committee. Recommendation. Council Norbert. The Council approves the terms of reference for the Building Healthy Communities and Committee um, as presented. Second. Council Kirby. Any discussion? All in favor? Second recommendation. Councilor The Council approves the terms of reference for the Tumbler Ridge Health Needs Committee as presented. Councilor Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, 8.2 is Vacation and Lugate Policy, Piers 12. A report from the Director of Corporate Service dated January 7, 2018, to seek, I'm assuming it's 2019. To seek approval for amendments to the exempt and management staff vacation and due days policy, Pierce 12. Any recognition? Council Norbury. That council approves the amendment to the District of Tumbler Ridge exempt and management staff vacation and due days policy, Piers 12, as presented. Second. Councilor Dinsky. Discussion? Councilor Alk. So just to, this is the first time I've seen it, like I, I read through it there the other night, but um, so what's happening here is our senior staff or whatever the new name is going to be, instead of them getting paid double time for their time, they're getting paid single time, uh, straight time hours. 
but they're allowed to bank 10 days up straight time hours? Is that? Up to 10 days out of year, Ms. Dorgan? Exempt staff, yes. Uh, we have senior management, which are the directors, and we have exempt staff, such as um, uh, well, deputy corporate officer, recreation manager, protective services, special specialists. Uh, now, we have about five or six employees who fall into that category where I'll talk to them now. They just get uh, their, their overtime hours are banked at double time hours, and they can bank up to a maximum of five days. So we're asking council to reconsider and uh, have the policy to read that they would bank their days at sing or their hours at single time, giving them a maximum of ten days of free time. Councilor Health. So for them to get originally for them to get five days off for forty hours in a week, they would have to work twenty hours of overtime, right? So so That's not. Why it sits right now. The way it sits right now. 37 and a half hours. 37 and a half hours, yeah. okay. And so we're going to change it so that each hour represents straight time, but they can have two weeks off. <clears throat> and this is, how, how does that work with like your staff? Because you're not union. Like how, like, how does that work? This is just an agreement that you guys have brought to your senior staff and they all agreed to it? Or? It's a policy that council adopted. But to, to change it, I understand how it works now when everybody agreed to that in their employment contract when they hired on. But how do you go from this to all the different employment contracts that you have within the district to then change it? Is everybody buy, buying into this? Yes. Uh, originally, when, this, when the policy was first uh, adopted, there was only one exempt staff person that was really affected. Since that time, there's been, like I said, there's, been, there's five or six exempt staff that fall into that category now, so, and we've been looking at the policy, but we haven't made any, uh, requested any amendments, and, and we're finding that due to the level of work that, that staff is undertaking, there's a, a, a quite a number of overtime hours that are being uh, accumulated, so, and they're not being uh, compensated for those. So, so like one, I know like, talking today with Mr. Wall was, was finance when it comes up to much times. The extra hours are putting in and stuff like that. That's kind of one of the reasons the policy is coming back. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry on. 8.3 the 2018 Unisite Municipal Innovation Award. The report from Chief Ministry Office dated January 7, 2019, and request a decision of a $2,000 donation to the local to a local non-profit. If I get the recommendation, Council Member, to receive this report to receive this report for discussion. Seconder, Council Member Jinsky, any discussion? All in favor? And who would like to start it off? Council Member. Um, and unfortunately, my, my point of discussion is, um, you know, I don't know if I can just choose one of um, 12 to receive $2,000. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I remember the Geopark came in earlier asking for, you know, $2,500. Um, you know, this could go with that. Uh, and I could be wrong. Ms. Torbell, please, if, if I am, I believe this is actually coming from them, so this wouldn't be for them to do their dinner. Mm. It would be, it, it's it's coming from the award that, that we won in regards to our branding. So to me, I, I don't think, and I could be wrong on it, but my understanding is they want to release the money, but I don't know if it would be released quick enough for dinner, but I'm not sure if that could be wrong. I'm not sure. Anybody else have any comments? So I have one. I actually, I actually think that you know whether we give it to one or give it to a couple. But uh, to me, one, one, one and two items couldn't hurt. But if you give one to one thousand to the food bank, which is definitely a needy uh, thing in our an organization within our community. And the other one is a thousand dollars to the geo park. And I bring the geo park into it in, in regards to our branding. There, that's one of the reasons we did the branding. Uh, and that's to me one of the reasons why we won the award. It's from all the volunteer volunteer hours and groups that have been there to talk and, and branded that with the geopark. I think, you know, 
That's just my thought, but I know the decision has to be made tonight is where we'd like it to go, $2,000. Um, seeing no other discussion, you know, I'll make that motion that we um, let's put the two thousand dollars between um, the TR Global Geo Park and um, the TR Food Bank. Seconded. Councilor Majinski. Any discussion? Councilor Howell. I'd prefer to see the money to go to uh, the Grizzly TR Day Society myself, but TR Day Society and Geo Park. I mean, the food bank's just coming off their. The, Christmas season where they get all their their stuff brought into them. I mean, I don't I know. There's always a need for food, but or food bank, but this is probably not the time of year that they need it. So to me, it's just, I don't know, Geopark and Tier Day Society, both of them came in today. It's a good fit. Discussion? <laughs> Councilor Kirby? Thank you, Councilor Kirby. Uh, you know, there, there wouldn't be a wrong choice here. All groups are deserving of this, but uh, I'll, I'm going to uh, go with Councilor Howell on this. Two groups that we're here presenting tonight. I'll go with the Tierra Day Society and the Global Geo Park. Okay. Any more discussion? So we have a motion to do that. So uh, all in favor of giving it to the Food Bank and to the Tumblr Global Geo Park. Opposed? Defeated. Put a motion on the floor. Yeah, uh, we give the $2,000 to the Tierra Day Society and the Geo Park. So $1,000 each? Yep. Seconded? Now security. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. <laughs> um, 8.4, um, that's gonna bring us back to the, to the geo park. Um, so a couple things there they were looking for, and one was, I mean, the first one is the, the hosted dinner um, in January. Anybody would like to make a motion? We're looking for $2,400. I don't know what the ballpark number was. So, Councilor? Make the motion that Council supports uh, $2,400 towards the banquet for the conference to the Joe Park. Second. Council Norbury. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Um, the second request that they, they brought up tonight is the team that Council is pretty excited. I think it's uh, a great thing that they brought forward, and that's in regards to the uh, uh, grant that they're going after, but it would be better if it came from the district. So, I wonder if somebody looks like a motion. Else, no break. I'll make the motion that um, district staff work with um, uh, members of the Geopark and uh, to to be the funding body for the um, northern for the grant. <laughs> Best I can vote for the top. Need something more specific? Oh. Seconded. Councilor Virginsky. Any discussion? Yeah, just read that. Read that back. Make sure. <laughs> make sure we got it. What we were trying to do here. It's tough to do on the fly, Chris. So yeah, it no, is. I I think it's tough. Put there, so. That district staff work with members of the Geo Park to be the funding body for the grant they are working on. Not right. Maybe a little more specific there. Councilor Help? Can, can, is it all right if I ask Sarah to, if she has a way that she wants to craft this motion? You're shaking your head, so I just thought, no. If I can speak. Please. So um, if it's going to, if we're going for that 100% funding option, it would be that the district of Tumbler Ridge apply for the Serbian so Law Bay, pull it out, the infrastructure, BC, that. Canada, Northern Communities Infrastructure. I can find that name right now, but investing yeah, so in that the yeah. district of Tumbler Ridge apply for the grant. Uh, that has to be the resolution that's the but it can also include partners such as, you know, it could say something like working with. Geopark staff to craft. That's the thing we're doing recommendations and motions on the fly. So the recommendations are even second, I believe. So I best if we vote this one down and then 
Councilor, yeah. do you have it in front of you? I th yeah, okay. I think so. So the best thing to do is probably to vote this one down instead of amending it, and then go from there. Councilman, Councilor? Yeah. Okay. All, all in favor of the recommendation that's on the floor? Opposed? Just before you go ahead and put it up there, we just need to make sure that the portion that I want to see involved in it is that we direct staff to make sure that we help them develop uh, the um, the grant application. I think it's crucial that we, we put somebody on this together with them. This is such an opportunity for us. I think staff should have somebody work with Sarah. Like, I don't care if it's 40 hours a week that they need to set somebody over there to get it right. I mean, we need to put the best product forward that we can in this grant. That's what I want to see in, in the motion that we put out here tonight. And let's take the time here, guys. We're not in a rush to, to get this motion and bang it off. Take our time. Let's get it right. Let's discuss it out here. Yeah, and, I fully agree. You know, like, this is what we brought it back for is this discussion, right? So, this before, Councilor. No. To Mr. Orwell, you want to put staff on, on, on the thing there, but is staff prepared to do this? I know, I know the delegation did state like she's definitely willing to do all the legwork and she's just looking for some, some support. What's the council's direction? Yes, sir. That work is the deadline is so January 23rd. The deadline is January 23rd. January 23rd. But that, that's something that can happen, right? The recommendation. And also, uh, um, you, I don't know if you're aware, but you do have a grant flow through policy that was just adopted by council last year, I believe. And so I'm not sure how that's going to affect the policy, but it might be in your best interest to waive that policy, barring anything that might hinder the district assisting the dual park in this endeavor. Thank you very much for that information. Yes. So how do we go about that when we make this recommendation? Just make your recommendation and just say, and that council waives the grant flow through policy for this. All right. Council Kirby, all that? <laughs> no, because I was reading this. <laughs> Well, I, I'm just looking okay, at. Well, we can like we can discuss it some more while you're doing that. If, if there's any more discussion before we do for that, and that's the, and I, I mean, and apologies to council and staff that we're again doing a recommendation on the fly. It's a, it's very tough on everybody. I know. Yep. So yep. we can definitely discuss it with council Kirby. Uh, it's it that's no, council Newberry. No, I believe um, it, it was the the Geo Parks. Um, they were going to do the, most of the, the legwork for us, right? It was just, it had to go in our name. Um, so hopefully the, the amount of staff time that's needed is it's minimal. Um, I'm full of support, you know, um, but yeah, I think um, it was mostly going to be by the Geopark, so hopefully our staff time will be. Yeah, so my understanding was the same thing, but if, to me, uh, uh, if it takes two employees to help to, to assist that for a $14 million yeah, facility, yeah, put three on it. <laughs> yes, sir, I, and I, I mean that's that's what I echo and I mean I don't know what Sarah needs to do maybe she has the idea of where she's brought it to already and like I, I'd like to have our district input to see if we can help get it a little better or grander so that when it goes to the province you know it, it hits all those uh, touchy-feely things that the province likes to, 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 to see in these applications uh, but that is, is what I'm trying to say that we need to direct staff with that in mind don't spare any expense on this Honestly, from now between now and the twenty third, if you have to put three employees on it, if that's what it takes, do it. I I'd like zero problem. This is a, a fourteen million dollar investment that we don't have to put in. I mean, why even? You know, that that's how serious I am about it. Well, I want to know I, council is like I mean, you know. I, I, I was a previous council for four years and but never seen. Wait for something like this to come forward. It makes you pretty excited, Council Kirby. Thank you, um, Acting Mayor Krakowka. Um So in this. Um, just, I'm just looking at, a, at an example resolution. Um, when we when we adopt this tonight, the project title. I know in your in your um, presentation it was called the Geopark Museum. Is that can are these kind of little things that if we pass the resolution tonight that these kind of things can change down the road? Uh, also, I know I read a little bit of that grant and it and it does state that they that. You know, we do have land that can go to this, and I, I think it. We also need to show that we have money um, in the bank that shows that we can see this project through. That's good. that was a big part of of that um, 
of just the whole application. So those are two things that we can think about now. So we got yep. we got two of the big boxes checked off. Um, so here, um, I'm just going to read you this example, and then we can talk about it. It says, I uh, and staff members, etc., of the community hereby certify the following is a true copy of the resolution adopted by the District of Tumbler Ridge Council Board at its meeting held on today regarding the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Rural and Northern Communities Program Funding Application for Project Geocenter, Geo, yep. Geopark Museum, that staff submit an application for grant funding application for Project X through the ICIP Rural and Northern Communities Program and that Council Board supports the project and commits to its share and there's XXX to the project. So at this point, if we're if we are going in with the Geopark of the Museum as co fund as as partnership, then that would be an X like zero money. That's just what I'm saying. So we wouldn't have to put a put a because I'm talking through to Sarah to everybody on that on that part. We don't have to really state money, right? Okay. No, if we if that's the reason why we're doing it, and not the Geopark because the Geopark does it. They wouldn't get the full funding. Where if we do it. There's a chance that we get the full 100%. Okay. So I don't think it has to be to this extent on the resolution that we can put forward. So is it going through as a recommendation or a resolution tonight? Is it this will be a resolution of council? Council, uh, Mr. Torvald? Okay. So is anybody okay, or I'll I'm going to break this down a little bit. I'd like to put forward a resolution that the District of Tumbler Ridge applies for the Investing in Canada Infrastructure, infrastructure Program Rural and Northern Communities Funding Application. Oh, yeah, so okay, that's right. Okay. That we apply for the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program dash Rural and Northern Communities Program Funding Application for Project Geo Museum. And that staff submit an application for grant funding through the ICIP Rural and Northern Communities Program. And that council, it's too fast. Okay. I gotta find where I was on here. Grant funding application. Did you get the project? Okay. And that staff submit an application for grant funding for, jeez, this is getting, I'm even confused now. This is a big one. Okay. Yeah, funding, that, yeah, that staff, Submit the application and that council supports the project and commits to its share. Yeah. Before we ask for a second, or if Ms. Dorival could just ask for a few right Yeah. Now. Is that too much? Yeah. Okay, so that the District of Tumbler Ridge applies for the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Rural and Northern Communities Program Funding Application for Project Geo Museum. And that staff submit an application for grant funding. And that council supports the project and commits to its share. And if you guys wanted, um, that council waives the grant for your Right. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing is, do we include the geopark and museum into that? Or we already know that we're working together on that. We don't need to state it. I think that'll be in the application. Okay. Yeah. And I'd and uh, one other point we could put in there, and the council directs staff to put whatever employee resources are required to assist the geopark in writing the grant up to January twenty third. Was a joint. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Well, you guys get Sure. <clears throat> and that council directs staff sure to put whatever right. employee resources are required to assist the geopark in writing the grant up to January twenty third. You're okay. Good. It hasn't been seconded. So that'd be your recommendation. That is, this was a last minute thing and it needs to be done, so I'm, I have no problem with that. Just, uh, oh. If I can get a seconder, Councilor <laughs> Jinsky. 
Okay. Any discussion about it? Again, all in favor? It's up to have her read it back. Or not? I think they've got it figured out. We can carry. That's okay. right. Yeah. So again, I want to just apologize to, to council and to staff for a, a recommendation or motion on the floor like that. <laughs> I kind of had an idea about it. Maybe I should have had uh, staff kind of pre look into a recommendation, but I didn't quite know that was on here. So, so I apologize. It's all good. So 8.5 of the scheduled meetings. So I have a couple things just to go over. There's, there is some... Um, Dates that seem to be a concern, and that's going to be the January 21st budget meeting. <clears throat> there was some discussion, um, a couple councillors and uh, the mayor, there's going to be some people out of town. So there was talk about moving it to the 14th instead of doing the PMP meeting. Um, but that's not going to work either due to that it looks like our budget, some of the capital budget projects, paperwork won't be on our desk until the 14th. So talking to talking with Mayor Bertrand and Mr. Wall, um, there's discussion that we could move that 21st budget meeting. So I guess so. Let me there. So the 21st budget the, the budget meeting that's supposed to happen on the 21st would move to the 28th, and then we would move the 28th budget meeting to the first week in February, just so it stays within the time for the the same order as, as staff has it. So we're not. So I'm not sure what the rest, what rest of council thinks of that. So why are, why are we moving these dates again? For uh, who? I'm not going to say you're not a quorum, but it might not be a quorum on the 21st. Is what I was told today. I mean, we we discussed this at length to try to fit this into the right. Like, we spent an hour or longer to try to fit this in based on what their timelines were and the government timelines and the taxation and the this and the that. And this is what we came up with. I'm not in favor of changing it again. I'm not I'm, beating a dead horse here. Yeah, well, I, I just think we don't have quorum. quorum. That's up to the councillors. That's their fault. Um, and there's a conference or something that's saying something. What's more important? Councillor Mowbray. Um, I don't have an issue with uh, changing the dates. I mean, I'd rather have, um, I'd rather postpone it and have all members of council to um, to weigh in on the issues. I mean, we're talking about uh, the, um, the budget of our town and I'd like to get a full view of what, what our uh, community thinks. Um, my only concern would um, um, that uh, February 4th regular meeting of council, um, if, if, we, if we take over that meeting with the budget meeting, we won't have a regular meeting of council in February. We wouldn't, we wouldn't take that over, it'd be just that, that first week, so either the 5th, 6th, 7th, or Oh, It'd be just a different date. We wouldn't take over that meeting and not add it to that meeting. I mean, it's a budget meeting and stuff like that. It would just be within that first week. Council Kirby? You... I'm fine with changing it. Council Majinski? Um, I have the same frustration Council Powell does just because we've talked about it for such a long time. It was like, I think we had tried try to reschedule a lot of people's uh, prior engagements as well beforehand and that's why we came up with these ones and now we're doing it all over again I don't know it's kind of frustrating but it's my two cents and I, and I don't disagree with either one of you it just it's, it's something that was asked about uh, and the last week I was asked and, and uh, it doesn't sound like I mean you guys there might be a court maybe we don't have to move it but there was some discussion and, and one was from the mayor and, and the talk was to move it to the 14th um, but I, I'm aware that for sure there's a few people that won't be here on the 14th already. And the timeline with staff having uh, the papers in front of us before that meeting would probably be not going to happen. So nobody would have a chance to read over their budget financials. So, so Mr. Orville, do we just need a motion here to move it? So I know, thanks Mr. Torrell, sorry for cutting you off. So I know Councillor Howell and Councillor Jansky are not in favor of it. If we were to move it to the first week of February, can you tell me a date that would work? I know you're not in favor of it, but if it gets moved, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm totally apologize, but if something has come up and- But what, what, are, what meeting? What are you going to? What is the mayor going to? What is so oh, important? I, I don't, I don't then know. I don't, then I, no, I, then I don't, don't know move it. Going to. Simple as that, don't move it. It's not that important that we know what it is, is it a, 
conference in Prince George for trees or what is it? Like this is this is why we set this up was to help our staff and our community. And we've talked about this before that we constantly leave town to go talk to these other conferences and all this other stuff. But when it's something that has to do with our community, I think that should be number one. We shouldn't even shouldn't even be hesitation on that. Yeah. I mean, if, if Mayor Bertrand has something that's really important and he needs to have it changed, change it. But it, to me, is it a conference? What is it? I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I guess, again, and I know I won't be here. It has not, I mean, I'm fine not being here, but it, it's not for me. But it's, okay. uh, my understanding is, is I'm not sure if it's conference or what it is, but it was something that we voted on for travel or something. He's gone to. I didn't look it up. So conflict and date. Councilor Majitski. Thank you. Mayor Coco, um, in the past we we discussed talking about adding more budget meetings, right? Yep. For the, from last year, why don't we just take it out, be done with it? Don't even reschedule another one, just and we'll just put more pressure on every other one from now on. Yeah, I believe the twenty first was the cap and stuff. I don't know okay. Different. Okay. So that's right. why I was, I, uh, it has to be in there. Well, that's why I was asking council we're moving the twenty first meeting to the twenty eighth, and then and then move the twenty eighth to the first week of February. And I'm just trying to get consensus to make, you know, I mean, we can just do it, but I, that's not how I want to do it. Councilor I'm available any day on the first week in Feb. Can February. somebody pick a date? Mr. Or, Mr. Or, there's a certain date that we work for staff and not work for staff. Councilor I want to just do the Tuesday, the 5th. Okay, February 5th. For the budget meeting, that's on the 28th. The 21st budget meeting goes to the 28th. Most council okay with that? Do we need a motion on that to do that? I'll make a motion that the um, the January 28th budget meeting uh, be rescheduled for February the 5th. And that the... Tw the uh, February, January 21st budget meeting be moved to the 28th. Second, Councilor Kirby. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Does anybody else have anything in regards to uh, schedule a meeting? Okay. See nothing, uh, notice a motion. Uh, upper deck. Council have forward the following motion. Notice a motion from the December 17, 2018 Council Howard. So again, that's just that an amount to design and create uh, a tender for the upper decking of the curling rink is included in the 2019 capital project discussions. So the staff has to come up with a number of what it would cost for us to have bring somebody in to do that. Um, you know, again, this is this could change. You could we could get halfway into the year and we get this grant approved that we're going to build a new whatever building over here and that that made op open up the school i mean it's a lot of ifs in there something like that happens you don't have to spend that money in you know to, to to upper deck the arena or even look at the costs of it right so it's it's just the option to see if it's available to do within the building i think it makes sense if i get a second to the motion council kirby discussion council over um so my issue with the um, with the issue with um, the upper decking, I, I absolutely fully support the walking um, track in town, um, but I don't think this is the particular area for us. Um, and even even if it is, I mean that that's that's its own merit. But you know we have an eighty thousand dollar recreation plan coming. Um, I think we should really wait for that to see um, what the community feels that we need in town. Um, and like, I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in committing to um, budget creation for this project when we should do a little more invest investigating on whether this is feasible um, and what are the, the costs associated with it, right? Like um, some good examples are how much of the um, curling rink are we going to lose in terms of um, its usability? Um, I mean, we're, we're talking about you know, we're, we need to have a major support structure up there, um, you know, to, to have it built to our needs. Um, we, might, we might lose out on um, some, some usage of that area. Um, you know, I, I think it's, I fully support the idea of an inner walking track, um, you know, but I think um, we need to do a little more investigation on whether this is even feasible. 
development where possible and what the potential pitfalls moving forward would be. Like it may be great for, for you know, three, four years, but um, it could, these, these sort of simple solutions sometimes can have major uh, problems down the road. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what this is, uh, Councillor Norbury. We're just looking, this is the investigation. This is the pr providing the funds for somebody to come in to look at the structure to say if it's even possible to do it. And if, you know, and, and to, to give us those types of uh, issues that they may see that we may not. To say, you know, you don't have the legally required amount of headroom or you don't have sprinkler systems or you don't have... Uh, you know, e egress, aggress, uh, access, or, or, or fire issues or code issues. That's kind of what we're looking for here with this. And this is to pr provide some funding so staff can go out and find somebody to, to, to do that work for us is what I'm looking for. You know, generally, Mr. Wall told me this could be somewhere in the range of between eight and $25,000, I think is what he was saying. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, um, I apologize. My, um, I, it sounded this this uh, motion sounded like it was um, a motion to set those wheels into motion to um, start building this upper decking. You know, um, you know, for me, as long as it's clear that we're just investigating if this is feasible, um, you know, I don't have an issue with it. But um, to me, it reads like we're creating a tender to ask them to build this for us. And just to be honest, that's how I read it too. It's yeah. create a tender for the upper decking of the turn rink. So to me, they were putting it out to tender for the upper, upper decking of the current for doing the study to make sure it's it's feasible and, and the cost of it. That's how I read it too. Mm -hmm. Kirby. Thank you. Acting Mayor Kirkoka. And I agree with that. That's what I thought too, and I wasn't going to vote for this motion. I'd like to, I, I'm not sure if I like the, I can see, visualize the idea of that happening over the curling rink, but I think it would be good to see if it can happen in the community centre at all, if it's even feasible, whether it's, so um, I can't vote for this motion the way it reads. Councilor Jensen. Thank you, Mayor Kukoka. Uh, it says to design and create a tender, so uh, the way I read it is that there, we're looking to have an engineer get paid to see if it's feasible. That's just how I read it, so that they're going to pay somebody to come in to see if it's actually feasible to put it at a whole other layer level on top of the arena. So it wasn't to actually get a full-on price quote on what's getting built and what's going to get done. It's just seeing if it's going to be feasible. An amount to design and create a tent for the upper deck. I just read it differently. No, I can. I can absolutely respect where you guys are coming from. That it is not clear. I asked Mr. Wall to design this for me. It's not exactly worded so that it's clear enough for all of us. The intention is certainly what uh, Councillor Mazinski has has said. He states it uh, as understanding what it is, and it's also what I stated to Councillor Norberry. This is for somebody to come in and look at the idea that we have, hire an engineering firm or company to come in and say this is what could be done. You know, and, and rough estimate. You know, they come in, if they come in and they say to do this because it's an existing building is $3 million, or you could build one over here for a million dollars, the project's right off the table. But to me, in my construction experience, I think it's totally plausible and feasible to put this in, also knowing the infrastructure underneath the curling arena, working in the building and helping put the curling piping in when I was younger. So I, I have a very good idea of what's going on underneath it there. I think it could be done. I think it's very feasible to be done. It's not a massive structure like everybody thinks it's going to be. It's it's Q decking. It's it's a it's a building product uh, that goes up. Basically, it's it's like a concrete floor that gets put in up there. But again, it's, there are uh, uh, implications that we don't know. We don't know about fire codes and and this type of stuff. So that's what I'm looking for. Let's take it off the table for now. I'll ask Mr. Wall to help me craft it a little bit better so that it comes in uh, for for more of what I'm looking to to bring forward. Yeah, like I remember what you what you brought forward before. I totally yeah. agree with no, the cause just, of it. Yeah. So I mean, we could also we could also uh, uh, vote this down, and, and and you could just reword it. And there, I mean, there's a couple words you'd have to change. Okay. Yep. If, if 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 you'd be okay with doing that, I just to me it's a design and create a tender. It's like it's going to go with the tender in a way. So, so um, any more discussion on this recommendation? All in favor of it? Opposed? Defeated. Council, how did you want to work on that for? Like, yep. Okay, I'll wait. I'll go to Council Kirby first here. Uh, 
Uh, 9.2 is lay down area recreational design. Council Kirby forward the following notice of motion from the December 17, 2018 regular council. Council Kirby? Yes, thank you, Acting Mayor Kokoka. Um, just to put into our budget just exactly how it reads is that that uh, lay down area is going to be coming back to the district um, in the fall of 2019 and uh, that council will take a look at that area and work with the groups and see how how it best suits our community and and see what we can uh, what we can uh, you know make best come out of that area and I think it's a great piece of property um, I know that the TRD society and I and I we've thought of a fairgrounds or or you know in in the past and uh, yeah just to bring it to the table for council to look at. Did you want to put a recommendation on the floor? Isn't it there? Okay. I'll the recommendation on the floor that funds are set aside in the 2019 budget for the lay down area recreation design. Seconder. Councilor Norbury. Any discussion? No question. All in favor? Opposed. 9.3 curbside recycling for Council Kirby for the following mo notice of motion from December 17, 2018. Council Kirby. Thank you, Acting Mayor Kaka. Um, this past term, we saw um, the district purchase a new truck, f um, garbage truck, and then also our new bins. I think that was a great step forward. The community is still looking for better ways to do recycling. Um, I know we've talked about curbside in the past. Um, uh, Mr. Beale had brought us a, a report a couple of years back about multi-material recycling and I'd just like to go back to that and see what kind of changes have come. If the district can move to something like that in the near future. Um, I mean Dawson Creek has, has uh, implemented that this year. It's not an easy, it's not easy to do recycling <laughs> no one likes to recycle but we need to do that we need to you know what's going into our landfills is it, we just got to cut that back and um, if we can move forward um, even doing one one week of garbage one one week of recycling I think that would be great but just the thing is is to look at it see how we, we can move forward on it uh, you know in the next term and and just make it make it easier for the residents to to, to uh, get involved too Anyway. Yeah. I, so basically, it's just just, to, just before you read your motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Mr. Wall today. That's why I was hoping mm -hmm. to catch before you read it. So I know how it reads that the staff report on the curbs are mm -hmm. completed for the 2019 budget. The timeline on that is three to three uh, report way too much to have info in three or four days. That's all they have left for the timeline. Right. So it wouldn't. It, it's it's pretty much undoable to have it for this budget. What? Discussion. But what he mentioned, like to have it, huh? it's three or four days a thing, and that's that's what I was, Mr. Wall, discussed today. What he's saying they could still do is do a staff report on curbside recycling to be completed in 2019, not before the budget 2019, but within that year. And I'm not sure if that's what you meant, anyways. Well, I mean, if that's what staff is recommending. That's what they have time for. That's what they have time for. I would. Well, I was hoping that we had kind of started that process and that we would be moving forward on it. Myself, but we can make the recommendation yeah. and, and council out. This is our budget. Don't forget that, right? This is not staff's budget. This is council's budget. And if we want to make time to put something like this in, we make time to put it in, right? This is how this stuff works, right? We have a report on recycling already. Do we not? Yeah, Do we not have a report the, that we got last that? year that explained and broke down in detail our costs of what it costs us to recycle and what it would cost to put a building in and all that? There's there was a huge cost structure. Yep. You know, it's there. Stuff, if if we that. start with that, there to me, there's no reason why you can't put it on there. I I totally don't foresee recycling curbside recycling happening in town. The costs are way too high. But the fact that Councillor uh, Kirby would like to see that information, it's there. We have the report already done. You know, for us to try to put that forward, I don't see any problem with that. Make time for it. If we've got to have another meeting, have another meeting. You know, I, I, I dislike when I hear that consistently, that we don't have time to do that. That, that Why don't we have time? Well, you know, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to, I guess, I mean, I'll take some heat here, but I mean, you know, we discussed today, and that's, I think maybe whether it was worded wrong or put in there wrong, I mean, if that, this is what most of the council Kirby wants to make. Um, she can definitely put it on the floor and, and, and we go from there. But it was just something that 
I'm not sure I, I wasn't <coughs> in this when you went Mr. to Mr. Wall, but his my understanding from him is that Sapporo and curbside recycling completed for the 2019 budget is something that he says the time frame is very tight. If that's something we want to put in there, then the staff will have to go through that. That's good. Thank you, Acting Mayor Coca. Uh, I draft. I I talked to to Mr. Wall about this, and and this is what he thought could happen. So at the time of writing this, if that has changed, that's changed since a month ago when we put this forward, when I, a couple weeks ago. So, What's you know, like? I'll put the recommendation that's a staff report on curbside recycling be completed for the 2019 budget. Seconded. Councilor Majinski. Any discussion? All in favor? Here. Just like to read a motion. <clears throat> Let's try this again. That the amount to hire an engineering firm or other other capable business with the intention of assessing the possibility of uh, upper decking the curling rink uh, for the purposes of a weight room slash running track is included in the 2019 capital project discussions. Clear enough. Stuff, right again. One more time. Okay. That the amount to hire an engineering firm or other capable business with the intention of assessing the possibility of upper decking the curling rink for the purposes of a weight room <coughs> slash running track is included in the 2019 capital project discussion. Seconded. Councilman, Councilman Jitsky. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councilor's business. Anybody have any council's business? Uh, question and answer period. Welcome, uh, Mr. Uh, Ernest. I'm assuming uh, you're here for the press. There we go. <laughs> you have any questions, Mr. Ernest? Uh, nothing at this moment. Any questions from the gallery? Good. I'd like a comment. Uh, no, do you have a question? I do not have a question. <laughs> Give me a comment at the end. <clears throat> Uh, resolution to close meeting, non for adjournment. Councilor Irving. Motion to adjourn. Second. Councilor Milbert. All there? No. Now you can make a call.